we were jumping them, you know, 60 feet to flak three times per lap and, and going 20 laps and then just, and, and we're finishing it. And they like, loved it. Yeah. Like the trucks are so <laughs> resilient. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They, and like, it didn't feel hard. Like it hurt a little bit, but it wasn't <laughs> that bad. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite podcast, the Dirt Drive Podcast. This week, we are spinning the wheel of Dirt Nerd. Technically, no, <laughs> no, we're spinning it. No. We're not at home. Yeah, but all right, fine, whatever. So we are out north of Winchester. Yep. At Nate Stowers' house, joined by Nate Stowers, right? Nate Stowers. Stowers, perfect. Stowers, Stowers right? like flowers. And then well, Eric Miller's here. Miller Motorsports. Eric Miller. What's up, uh, guys? And then we got Tom. Yep. Tom's here like always. Flowers like flowers. God. Remember I'm, Ricky Johnson at, at it, Crandon? He could not get your name right to so save his life. I was doing short course racing in my <laughs> side by side, and this dude, Ricky, was announcing my name. Nathan Stowers. Yeah. This dude, Ricky Johnson, yeah. right? And of course, my mom <laughs> is watching this, and she's typing in the comments, it's Stowers like flowers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I'm like, and of course, I ended up like wrecking and getting knocked out. Yeah, because like, everybody says Nathan Stowers. Yeah, and I'm like, Mom, just stay off the comments. Please. Stowers <laughs> like flowers is a good one. That was a yeah. tough weekend, though. I wasn't there for that one, but... Yep, you got yourself uh, almost life flighted to the hospital. Oh, I think they ooh. Ground oh like actually knocked out. Oh, yeah. Not like knocked out of the race. Yeah, wrecked razor. Yeah, ooh. it was, that sucked. It was one of the wild experiences because I was like, I'm just a little kid in a stock razor that I put a big Miller Motorsports sticker on the, the side of. At the big house. At Crandon <laughs> which racing is, against. Which if you've never been to Crandon and never been on a big racetrack, yeah. it's like walking on to, you know, the, the, you know, the World Cup soccer pitch or like Yankee Stadium and looking around. It is huge. It was massive. absolutely wild. And I was like, I couldn't believe that I was there. And we took off. You know, there's 20 people in the front, and I was in the front line, and then 20 people behind us, and two people behind them, and we took off, and there's freaking side by sides flying over top of me into turn one, into turn one, and I'm just <laughs> holding it to the floor and hoping <laughs> to God that I make it out, and I did. I somehow like made it out, and I was in like sixth, and I was like, holy crap! And I was just driving, and uh, like halfway through the race, I was like passing the guy that was in fifth, um, so I was gonna be in like fifth or fourth, and took a turn too hot. And I uh, got up on the bike, and I turned into it, and I hit a, I hit a wall, Oof. and then I woke up, and uh, it was funny too <laughs> because I woke up and I couldn't breathe, so it's not that funny. Um, but uh, <laughs> so I'm like radioing to my uh, spotter, and I'm like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, <laughs> and like of course he was like, what are you saying? And I finally was like, I can't breathe, and they just shut the whole freaking race down. I just got the wind knocked out of yeah. me, so I was just yeah, being a little happened. bitch, but like. It was, it was bad. I had that happen to a friend who races ATVs over the summer. He was coming into a turn too hot on a um, on a dirt track, and uh, he caught the rubber line, the black line. Oh yeah, rolled it, broke his femur, oh, threw him threw him into the wall. It was brutal. Yeah, <clears throat> now close track racing is no joke, and yeah. Crandon is the big house for a reason. So yeah. it was absolutely wild. And then like I finally got out of the car, and like everybody's just cheering for me, and I'm like looking and I'm like why what it was, it was just so surreal there's 60,000 people just screaming at me because I wrecked and, and I'm you're like, just waking up you're like what yeah the hell I'm like what the heck and of course like everybody's like you need to go to the hospital and I was like no I'm not going to the hospital screw you guys went back to the camper and then I realized that I had no idea where I was and uh yeah so you went I to the up, hospital I went to the hospital <laughs> yeah didn't break yeah. anything all my ribs were like just bruised yeah. and then me and scott had to drive you know 14 hours back home and of course they were just trying to make me laugh because it hurts so bad to laugh because <laughs> my friends are this is good friends i was yeah. gonna say that sounds like yeah. something we would do yeah, they're they're great yeah. so how do two east coast boys like you guys get into racing nate take it buddy huh. how did we meet let's start there yeah yeah uh well speaking of scott decker um <laughs> Yeah, me and an uh, old buddy of mine, we were just, you know, building stuff and posting on Facebook, and uh, they reached out to me to build the, what was it, the Z ZJOH? Yeah, I think it was the Grand Cherokee. We needed some help because it was last-minute motorsports, per yeah. the usual, the, of the old days, 
And uh, yeah, I didn't, I hadn't even met Nate. Okay. And Scott was just, Scott stepped up. Like we had the Ultra 4 car we were dealing with and we'd signed up to race 4,600 as well. So we had two builds going on. That, that old Grand Cherokee was my first car. So it had a bunch of nostalgia and meaning to me, but I thought it'd be cool to go racing it. And sure enough, it was, it fought us tooth and nail though. And um, you know, it, it has a good story. It came back to win in 2014 on like what, three cylinders. I mean, the thing barely <laughs> ran. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even start on race morning. No. Was that the year? Yeah. Yeah, we painted it yellow so that was the year that we were we took it to the lake bed not running there's a picture on my lift a week before we left and it's a shell and we're putting axles under it and the front of the race car is out dom's building a nine inch for it and i see that photo every year and i'm like i'm in such a better place this year it stresses <laughs> me out so much but we got it together and ended up winning the emc in it but yeah neat that was Damn. the car that he jumped in and yeah kinda, we were me and uh, one of the old buddies, we just would drive down to Scott's house, you know, in the evening is down in DC. And uh, I was just like, hell yeah, I'm working on race car shit. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I didn't care at all. Cause I was like building rock crawlers and stuff, but like, I didn't really know too much about like ultra four stuff. And uh, then he won in 2012 and I was like, oh my God, this guy's kind of close. So of course I was like sending front requests to all of the guys just trying and then somehow they reached out and of course i was just like uh you know i was like oh my god they reached <laughs> out to me thinking that they were cool they're not <laughs> yeah. at yeah. all but uh no we, we we just went down there and started helping them and then uh i ended up going out uh i guess that was 2013 yeah um yeah but i wasn't even like a part of the team yet i had just like helped and it was so it, it was a random trip i feel like you were so young well, I was. You that look was, so old now. That was 12 years ago. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Well, y'all were what, both in your 30s? I'm 32. 37 32. going to 38 already. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I'm 20, I, turned, I turned 30 yeah. in two weeks. Yeah, you're the baby. Yeah. yeah. And then Tom's 33. 33. Yeah. yeah. That trip was wild, though. That was when, that was when uh, I caught a, like, <laughs> I met a random group of guys called the Maryland Creepers. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That, that tracks from Maryland. It yeah, does track from Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and they were in off-road stuff, and they were like, yeah, we need we need help driving back. So I flew out and then drove back, and that was when nice. I got in another wreck. That's Yeah, that yeah. was what? Dan Geyer's Dan truck? Dan Geyer's truck. We were in Arkansas. I like I think we were either in Oklahoma or in Ar Arkansas, and uh, we were just driving by, and the t trailer started whiplashing. And yeah, well, too long of a bumper pull, overloaded yep. with you know the weight in the wrong spot. And I was sleeping in the back, and then all of a sudden again, I woke up and off the side of the road, and we're I was concussed as all hell. Right, so man. note to self: Nate doesn't come on any road trips. <laughs> no, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> he doesn't drive the race car. He doesn't <laughs> get into the road no, trips. No, that Sh it's, it's, should we just segue into the the crash from when Josh built? bc oh my god and and because it seems like you just crash a lot <laughs> i i've only crashed once when i was driving I was, that's a good point so once when i was driving so why did i ask you to get back in the right seat i don't i should reconsider <laughs> my decisions now yeah every wreck that i've been in i've been riding with someone other than at crandon now when we raced roush creek in my side by side and i mopped your and jake burke's asses <laughs> Um, I don't remember that one. Well, you, you broke. Uh, pretty much <laughs> <immediately>. <laughs> yeah, okay, there we um, go. Me and Kurt, we rolled over, and uh, we got Sean Halleck or whatever to roll us back over, and then went back and won that race. That was that was that was the race that got me into me racing hardcore. But uh, yeah, every other race, I've I've been just a rag doll in somebody else's vehicle. It's so for Nate to step back up, it was it, it meant a lot to me when he said he'd get back in the car. Is he your co-dog? Yes, yeah, he's my okay. co-dog. Yep, and uh, yeah, we haven't we haven't won hammers together yet, but that's uh, that's on the list. S soon, to, <laughs> soon to change, hopefully. Mm -hmm. we so we've definitely we've definitely won the fun game out there, yeah. but oh. we have we did win the 2020 national championship together. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, we went to Reno and and won it there. Reno was always a great race. We raced at the uh, Wild West Motorsports Park that is no longer in existence, but it had mm. it had Crandon like feels. It was it was the ultimate. <clears throat> venue for a national championship because yeah. i mean that track had more elevation change than any other short course in the country and they would set up this boulder field in front of the start finish line and then they got crazy and added another one with a jump in front of it and <laughs> that year 
you know, all of us decided we're going to jump, jump the rocks, the fast guys in qualifying. So that's when we got into jumping rocks and ultra four cars, but there's, I'll never forget the video. I think rugged radio radios posted it nope. of, I think that was for second place or something, but the last straight away through those rocks. I mean, guys were just getting to the point where we're flat footing it through it. And the difference between, I think it was God third damn. place or second. There's a video of me just sideways through it. And it's so, it looks so bad and it turned out so good and made a clean pass for second right at the end. But Everybody just gave it 110% because you had the whole offseason to rebuild the car and fix it. Yeah. It, was, it was cool. It's the last race, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's wild because I got to ride in your first chassis, the first Miller Motorsports chassis with um, Schooly. Yeah. Yep. At, at, during the qualifying lap at uh, uh, FRO. Yep. And, like, that's just such a different experience than anything I'm doing. I've done before in my life just sitting in a passenger seat. I couldn't imagine being. Well, we've also. I hate it. Yeah, I was. Just, <laughs> it's frightening. We've it's also terrifying. decided Tim doesn't get to drive a race car if we ever get there because, like, he just he can't go fast. Like we did the the twenty four hour oh, event, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I rode with him and daytime wooded roads. Like we're just getting our doors blown off because he's doing like fifteen on these trails. Yep. And then I started driving at night, and we ended up in a group, and we're doing like fifty down yeah, the trails. Yeah, then, then I figured out what and his he's like. He's like, he's like, oh, uh, uh, are you good? You good? I'm like, yeah, man, we're good. Like, it's yeah. don't worry about the cliff on the right. Right, like, right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's hairy at night, and that's yeah. that's cool too, because that's where Nate and I are going to do this next one. It was a little unfortunate. I saw that uh, they were doing the. 24 hour deal in West Virginia. And yeah. I, I kind of reached out to Jed. I said, Hey, bud, I said, you know, these look like some of the same trails and stuff. I, I've been doing this kind of, I guess it's called overlanding now thing yeah. since I was adventure you know, wheeling driving. Just, yeah. Just, just yeah. the whole reason I got into racing was just the, really the, the unknown of it, the adventure yeah. part yeah. of it. Like I'm not, everyone's like, Oh, you know, you're a car guy. I'm like, I appreciate motorsports and, and I, I like cars, but off road has always appealed to me because I've always tried to go farther and faster and see stuff you know others others haven't or don't want to or can't and that's always been the allure to me so like backcountry stuff sign me up yeah and i saw that 24 hours west virginia thing and reached out to him and uh he shared the file with me i'm like man i've done most of these roads because most people don't go looking for these kind of back roads and uh that's what got me hooked into motorsports this is really why i race i mean i love speed i love i love off-road trucks and it's my passion but I'm a rock crawler at heart. Yeah. I, lo- I love going slow. I've got two little boys, Nixon and Wyatt. They're five and three. And he's like, oh, are they going to race? I'm like, no, that's the last thing I'm going to get them into <laughs> yeah. is going fast in vehicles where they could, you know, potentially, you know, not be here. And sure. I'm like, I, th- I really, truly believe that the reason I have the ability I do in a race car is because of rock crawling roots. Yep. It really teaches you vehicle control and dynamic and, and how to drive. And I'll get those kids in a buggy and... Hopefully they'll just want to go trail wheeling with us. So. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> funny. The best. It's funny though. Cause like the last couple ultra four guys we've talked to that are West coast guys, like uh, Kevin Jones, he, he started in the dirt bike world. And is like, the reason I got into ultra four is going fast in the desert. So it's like that West coast, East coast thing still of where those guys are all used to going fast in the desert. We're used to the rock crawling, the technical, yeah, find the technical find the line. Two wheels teaches you a lot no. about line choice. And a lot yeah. of guys that are good on moto or bikes at all are good off road. I, I yeah. grew up riding mountain bikes. I still do yeah. it. And yeah, you can, if you can pick a line on a bike, you can drive a truck or a yeah. rock crawler. Yeah. It's just because like we're the same way we were rock crawlers to start and, now it's like, oh man, rock crawling is getting expensive because like the rigs get more expensive. You have to build more. My YJ is a two and a half, three year project at this yeah. point. It's My Cherokee all... doesn't currently run. Yeah. Yep. So, and then we've but, we, been there. but we both have JKs that we can put the family in and go. Go bomb anywhere. around the National Forest. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty. I have a 2016 that <laughs> yeah. hey, Jeremy from Rock 16. Crawler keeps trying to get okay. me to cut up and do his his pro rear conversion i'm like oh, jeremy yeah. i love my jeep and i want as bad as i want to do that <laughs> i li- i like that it just i, I won't v8 swap that yeah. truck it's a three six yeah. it's it's a nice truck it's got nines under it and external bypasses like but it's a, it's very unassuming it's yeah. a sleeper it doesn't yeah. have a lot of garbage bolted on so, it you look at it and you're like what's up and you look under it and you're like oh, oh that that's thing's the real that's deal yeah. yeah so let me ask you this because i don't know if it's just maybe lack of coverage why does nobody run Jake, like a four door JK in 4600? The wheelbase is really too long. Is it? It is okay. too long because you're limited to 35s. Right. So, like, well, we I did the Gladiator. 
Yeah, well, we <laughs> we we got the gladiator through the course. It had no lockers with no lockers too. Oh shit! Was, yeah. I, See that that in itself was a feat. Like I was so proud to just finish in that thing. It was the yeah. first. It was a non-production car, but it was the first year they came out. We got asked to drive for Jeep, and it was cool because it had a third seat. So Nate and Robbie both co-drove in that, and I think that's one of the most fun races we've had in car. It was the funnest time. I ha- I was hooked up to the Bluetooth, like just jamming just... Notorious B.I.G. Oh yeah, that's he did dope. Steering wheel oh on. My like God. It, it was, was awesome. Right. It so, was cool. does the shop does the shop JK just become a race car at this point? Just needs a cage. <laughs> just needs a cage. I don't know. It's the four door <laughs> is not a bad platform. It's just a little bit long. So I had the opportunity to race um, uh, four door three ninety two uh, with Rock Crawler the last couple years, yeah. and uh, it was a uh, pre production three ninety two. It was like an America's Most Wanted swap, but it was the right model year, so it fit the rules. But it was. Uh, you know, it's a heavy motor that's yep. low down torque with that eight speed transmission and it had a Rubicon case at four to one gears and it just the transmission control was awful. It yeah. would go into lint mode and oh, damn. The, it, it was, was a very free, right? Yeah, it was yeah. a very frustrating vehicle to drive and I'm like, I'd take a V six over this garbage any day. Now, however, a factory three ninety two is an amazing Jeep. Yeah. Like they have it all right. The, yep. you feel like the motor belongs with the transmission, it's all integrated right. Like it's it's the best Jeep ever built. But that one was tough because it you know had all those electrical quirks because it was so new yeah but i mean we we managed with the wheelways but it's it's yeah. a skyscraper yeah. in height to make it work you see a lot of the the four doors in the 45 class mm-hmm. it's not so much right. in the stock yeah. class because you need those modifications to get them right to make them competitive yeah if, i wasn't sure if it was a three six thing because all those four doors are also ls swapped at, or heavy no, swapped the at three that six point. is a good motor yeah if, if, i if, like it if i had to build a 4600 car right now and and i was a you know going with the jeep platform two-door jl with the four-cylinder and lightweight axles nines they could they could compete with the broncos really it would be competitive yeah i mean you just like the the turbo and the the four banger i think the weight matters the weight, and yeah. then you could tune it yeah yeah i mean the six cylinder's not bad but yeah i think that the four cylinder could have some potential that I, they're, people aren't they're really into. peppy i mean i i get to drive them all the time at the yeah, shop and for sure they're just they're great i just think the weight matters in 46 so much when when you qualified in the gladiator you were 10 seconds faster than anybody oh, else mm-hmm. on on non-tuned shocks on complete you crap. can't you can't you can't give the gladiator credit for that we dro- well we drove <laughs> it from driving he's not was, that good no I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we we drove it from dave shop to the lake bed and that was the first time it had been driven yep it was yeah the first miles and then and then so we're sitting this is a big deal because like jeep was finally like okay we're gonna get back into motorsports and they but they were apprehensive to do it and they had multiple people calling the shots and so i'm i'm literally sitting on the line and i'll never forget this dave dave cole comes up to me and jeep was a sponsor of the event so he was working with them and he comes up to me he goes hey you'll never guess who i just got off the phone with i'm like i don't know and honestly dave i don't care i'm about to qualify the owner, the the head of Jeep, and he said, "Do not run that truck. They they don't want it to compete this year. They they got cold feet. They're out." I'm like, "Okay, so we're parking it." He goes, "The hell, we're parking it." He goes, "This is my race. I make the calls." He goes, "Go out there and put this thing on the pole. Don't make me regret it." And I'm like, "Oh my Jeez, god, dude, no this pressure. could have waited till after." <laughs> no, that's re- that's like, wreckers or checkers, right? Yeah, there. I'm yeah. like, "Okay, thanks, Dave." <laughs> so I'm sitting on the line with this in the back of my head and. We put her on the pole, thankfully, but it was uh, it was cool. It was a cool opportunity, yeah. and I thank all the guys that put everything into it because uh, that was a push to get that thing done. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Like, get it on Savvy because they, they gave yeah. us as good of a vehicle as they could, but, like, our prep is just so different than yeah. a lot of other people's. Well, so. the night before, we just all got under it. There were four of us with torque wrenches and Loctite and paint oh, pens, sure, yeah. and we're like, oh, my God. Yeah. We can't drive this without touching every bolt. But yeah. and I, I, I'm still like, if if Robbie <laughs> Gordon didn't drive the Desert Loop, there there would have been no chance that we wouldn't have won. No, because he we get it on Robbie, but he crash locked the lockers, and uh, it happens. I mean, that to, it, and it, it goes to show, like, still to this day, a non rock crawler has yet to win KOH. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Like we haven't had a desert crossover guy. We haven't had a short course guy. The stuff that we did to get it through that finish line in two-wheel drive. Like, we were oh, in yeah, two-wheel was... drive the whole time. Me and Robbie, uh, the other co-driver, we were just out the whole time. We yeah. hiked the whole freaking course. Yeah, yeah it was crazy. I but mean, yeah, get it on those things about rock crawling. <laughs> yep. Just hiking. 
you know, I got into rock crawling so I don't have to go hiking. Yeah. But this is why we started racing was just like that adventure and, you know, doing stuff yeah. other people hadn't done. And that was the allure to me. Yeah. So and what was your start in racing? My start, uh, I like kind of got into it through rock crawling. So I grew up playing sports my whole life. Uh, I, you know, I played soccer, ice hockey, and baseball. So year round, we were constantly doing something and competing. And I went to school, played hockey up in Scranton, and uh, I hurt my shoulder as a junior. I tore my labrum, and like I was starting to get into rock crawling. I was four wheeling a little bit, like when I was sixteen. I was starting to get an interest in cars, and uh, you know, I we had always gone, you know, we were mountain bikers. So we'd go camping and mountain biking. And I started to enjoy like the four wheeling part of doing that mm-hmm. a little, even more than what we were doing. And, uh, when I went up to Scranton, Paragon Adventure Park was yep. 40 minutes from campus. So I started going on monthly rides and I caught wind of competitive rock crawling. They had the new rock series there. And man, I looked at some of those stock mod vehicles and I'm like, this isn't far from what I am already driving. I had a TJ on 35s and I'm like, that looks reasonable and legit and I need to put a roll cage in this thing and a couple modifications and be done with it. And, uh, that was the allure for me. So I got hurt and I was starting to, starting to go rock crawling anyway. And you know, my, my coach, I, I, it's funny. I remember giving him the weekends that I was going to be away rock crawling and he just so he could dress the other defenseman and you know, it would not be a problem. Well, he out of spite would, uh, schedule me to play, say that I missed the game and then bench me for the other games. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not playing playing this game. game. It was just, I wasn't going here with hockey. It was D three stuff. Like it was, it was fun, but it wasn't, it was enough to go to school after, right. After school, I'm like, I'm not going to play hockey anymore if there's not a rink in town and we didn't have a rink. So it was, it was a wake up for me because I was like, once college is over, competition is over like it doesn't it can't really just die i've done this my whole life and so i was looking for that competitive outlet and avenue and rock crawling started to kind of fill that void for me so that's what got me into it um and the rest is kind of history i guess we haven't quite gotten into the competitive stuff yet we were supposed to go to an event in april but with we're going to moab in may Mm -hmm. so with the moab trip in may we couldn't afford to beat the shit out of my XJ and, yeah. and Roush Creek at a competition. So, but uh, that is something we want to get into is the competitive rock crawling. Yeah. Is, that's probably the, the next step that we have of, yeah, of like, like it was a, just an RC club comp or Roush Creek yep. club, club, Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> club comp. Yep. Yeah. Um, so all you do is pay entry to the park and it's just put on by, by yeah. Bernie and those guys. I did it once um, as a, I think it's Rob Lund. Yeah. Lund. As a spotter, like way back, like when I was in college, I, I normally would drive, but my, my buddy asked me to spot and it was, I'll never forget that Rob Kaczynski and I won whatever the class was we were in in his thing. And he did really good. I haven't talked to Rob in a while, but he actually listened that weekend to me. Yeah. And <laughs> it was, wow. it was really cool to be on the other side of it. Cause like I've done some co-driving and I enjoy that aspect of it. Just not in my own car. You didn't that's like fair. it when you co-drove for me. Ah, uh, that's true because <laughs> do we want to talk about the shocks? I mean, <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I love Nate and Nate, <laughs> Nate is awesome. He will, he'll hyper fixate and he'll think of things that I don't. Oh good. I thought we were talking about it on the way up here. No, like, no, we don't, we don't need more friends with ADHD. <laughs> no, well, his ADHD man. actually helps us in a lot of situations, but yeah, yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we raced the whole ultra four East coast series in my side by side and it, we won felt Horrible. We won the series. We won the <laughs> we won the series, and then at the last race, after we finished, I checked the valving on the shocks, and they were turned all the way stiff. Yeah, the, nice. the whole time, the whole the whole the series, the whole series. Shocks, yeah, yeah. And the last race, you remember this? Uh, I blew the uh, the front drive gears out of the transmission. And I knew I had to finish this one lap. Yeah, we had, we knew to, to win so the championship. I drove backwards. <laughs> so you just had to finish the lap. It doesn't matter where you came in. Yeah, but it was miles. We, we did miles in, in reverse. reverse. Yeah, awful. he actually was like, dude, I need to get out of this. I, we were going up hills that were sketchy <laughs> yeah, it was backwards. Bad. It was bad. And like the, yeah, it, it was, it was really, really bad. But we, we made it that lap and we got the championship. And then the reverse finally blew out of it because I was just going to keep going. Yeah. I mean, my transmission screwed, so hell with it. And we finally, we made it. And he was like, get me out of here. Get me out of this car. And it was horrible. It, it was horrible. But again, that's like, those are the reasons why we race. Like, we don't race for like the win. Like, I, I, I couldn't tell you our finishes and podiums and all that crap. But I always will remember that. 
yep. yeah. not quitting and not giving up. And there's well, that's that's the best part of it is when the chaos happens. Is those 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 are the one. That's when the most fun happens. Is when yeah. shit doesn't go right. Yeah. yeah, I've never been in a in the race car with you and actually achieved greatness easily <laughs> ever. Like it's there's always yeah. things that like oh my god, what the heck are we doing? Why are we in this position? And then we just work through it, like work through it, and then all of a sudden we're winning and uh like that one race uh oh man this was the one that i told you to go left and you went right or whatever <laughs> and uh I'll, I'll never ever forget this moment because there was a hill and there was this a was Gomez. dirt dirty turtle off-road yep. park which yep. is east coast wheeling at its finest it's it's gully hill climbs and trees and and it rained. wet rocks like it is it, def- it embodies east coast it, it rained so much the night before and it was all clay and it was slick and uh so i'm looking up this hill and i was like just whatever you do go up and at the y left because gomez is on the right and he just said fuck you and went up and went right. <laughs> and then we were at a Gomez and he was just, ha- you had to plow trees down. It was, it was so, I was so anxious because we were, we were logging so hard. I thought the car was just going to get hung up, stuck on trees, but that's some of those races. That's what happens. You got to make your own yeah. Yeah. path around yeah. because yeah. there's no other alternative. There's no yeah, recovering that, some of the cars. There and, was an alternative to the oh, left yeah, that and one you I, just <laughs> didn't listen. No, that one um, I screwed up. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was so funny because uh, him and I out. have a really funny relationship in the car. Uh, I didn't talk to him but for a whole was, other lap. That was the race that I was arguing with Leah over the radio that I wasn't going to win. Yeah, you and were. And she said we had 15 seconds to make it in because Derek West was close. Yep. And I'm like, no, I don't think that's right. And they finally were like, shut up and drive. If you don't stop, you're going to win. You have 15 seconds to get in. Yep. And I was like, okay, yeah, you guys are right. <laughs> I was arguing with her over the, <laughs> over the mic whether we were second or first. Yeah, and meanwhile, me and him are in there bickering because he went right and I said left and I wouldn't talk to him and he was like dude I need you to talk to me like one of the things that he requires me to do is just constantly talk the whole time in yeah. the race because it keeps him focused I guess and like <laughs> it's I was white like, noise yeah, yeah I was like I'm not talking to you nope you're not listening anyway and uh but I tell you he freaking put the power down that's and what that's what we did we threw down for that yeah. one for that's sure. what we did for the full 24 yeah. I, we were 26 and a half hours for 24 hours at Appalachia we didn't wow, stop talking yeah we didn't stop talking because it kept us up. It was yeah. that and smelling salts. Smelling I'm, excited, salts. I'm excited for my night shift when he gets to drive and I get to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> you won't sleep. You I'm, won't sleep. I'm, According I'm to Jed, this this event coming up is harder from a trail standpoint cool. than the one we did. Yeah. And I can sleep in a car like nobody's because I get car sick right. really easily. So if I'm not driving, I have to be asleep. And I didn't sleep at all. I also didn't get sick somehow. It's, it's so funny at how like your mind tells your body this stuff. Like, yeah. because the, at the hammers, like when we, if we race like a four hour race or even line mountain, like my mental capacity is for the amount of time that we're going to be doing it yep. for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, if it lasts longer than that, I'm like, damn it. But like the hammers, we're out there getting the crap beat out of us for eight hours. Yeah. And like, when we get done, we're still just at it. Yeah. Ready. ready to go. Yeah. It's, it's weird at how your mind can do that. I'm that that's. For that, 24 hours. No, that's what I, I like about racing is it's such a it's such a good metaphor for life. Like there's a start, a finish, you get out of it what you put in it. Like it really is a condensed version of life. And that's why it's so, I don't know, it's just like uh, freeing for me when I close my visor, especially, especially that first week in February for Hammers. You have all the responsibilities and worries in the world go away for that eight hours and you have one job and one goal and i that's the easy part for me i that i i can do that every damn day and i look forward to that and like i said i mean i think that's what brings me back and drives me is that it's something about the struggle too like I, it's funny. I think that you and I have talked about this before. Nothing that I personally have ever done in life has been easy, and I don't know why. I've had the choice to do easy things, and everybody has like, the choice yeah. to do easy stuff. Oh yeah, but it's, then it's like, hey, this is the like hardest off-road race in the world. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Like, why? Why do that? That's so. Stupid. It's it's the it's the dedication of the prep work and oh. knowing the know, knowing the machine in and out, and then preparing your body for that you're gonna pay it's it's, abuse it's like everything in life you're either gonna pay for it now or pay for it later that's why like you know i'm i'm not a health nut per se but my my wife is 
all over that kind of stuff. Ever since we had our, had the kids, you know, she's she's become in tune. She's she's fixed hypothyroidism on her own completely without medication, like okay. just via diet and lifestyle and exercise. And so I just follow her path because I've always been an athlete. I've always exercised, but that stuff has come easier to me than her. Um, and so I have a great deal of respect for everything she's done because my kids are, you know, happy and healthy because of it, but it really has made me a better driver, a better athlete and a better human because like you guys were talking about just diet, right? Yeah. Diet is fuel. It's like yeah. exactly what you put in your race car. You put garbage gas in, yeah. she ain't going, you put the best stuff in it. It's going to peel out. And it really is true. And yeah. it sucks today in our society. Like we've just kind of accepted not even mediocrity. It's just the, the entire, uh, I don't even know how to say it. The whole industry of food is, is crap. Yeah. And when you really start to dig into it, you, you re, you're like, wow. Well, uh, they, they try and fix bad food with medicine and that's also not the answer. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. Yeah. Of, yeah. yeah. But wrong podcast. <laughs> yeah. Wrong <laughs> podcast. But, <laughs> but it's the same, it's the same point of it's, you gotta, you gotta take care of what you put in yeah. your body and a hundred percent. Oh, so. dude, before I had a girlfriend, I lived <laughs> off of freaking, uh, you know, pizzas, just mm-hmm. uh, oven oh. pizzas and everything that a normal bachelor would live off of. And I felt like crap all the time. And then all of a sudden she started feeding me real food yeah. and I'm like, oh wow, I don't yep. have heartburn. I feel good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh? Oh, I've lost 10 pounds and I haven't yeah. done anything. Nothing. Yeah. Believe me, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I just keep losing weight. It's weird. Yep. Yeah. I actually, I, we've really started to kind of continue down that path of exploring like really like biohacks and things like that. Like I actually started doing, uh, ice baths before hammers this year mm-hmm. and like I couldn't get Nate to do it. He was too soft but i started in november <laughs> yeah. outside complete you know break it through a couple inches of ice every yeah. morning to get in it and honestly it was you know i haven't been sick since which is amazing the fascinating it, it 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 is it really does have a good immunity benefit but for me it was just the it's all about like your brain limits you so much in yeah. everything you do so it's really good mentally for focus because you just it's a shock to your nervous system but um it's the easiest thing in the world to just get in the water and sit down, but it, your brain just says, no, I don't want the pain. But then as you do it, you condition yourself to understand the benefits. And then I, I looked forward to it and I still do. I'm still doing it. We've actually, my wife just bought a a sauna now too. So we're doing the hot and cold. And like I said, I've never felt better. I've been, you know, not, I hadn't had an illness. I usually would get sick during the week of hammers. It was great the whole time. I wasn't sore. I had energy. Like those lifestyle changes really matter. And like, I'm in a position where I have to perform at the top of my game in, in February. And I have a lot of people that are counting on me to do it. I have a lot of support and partners that every year we're expected to win that race. And the, we can spend all the time in the world on the car and everything else. But if you're not in the right place to do it, it doesn't matter. It's like I tell the guys all the time, if if I didn't have them, my job is easy. If I didn't have the crew that I do, we wouldn't produce the results that we produce. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's a complete team effort at at hammers. I mean, rock crawling is a little bit different story, but the racing part of it, if you don't have good help and support, I mean, just what the girls were cooking meals starting in December. They meal prepped everything damn, two months froze, ahead froze of time. It all and, froze it all and brought it out. And again, we had, I think we eat better on the lake bed than anywhere almost. It's great. It's amazing. <laughs> this year though, like this year, our team was so on point. Like we, we've gone through a couple people. Yeah. We flash. had some new recruits yeah. this year and yeah. I've learned to trust. Uh, it's funny. All of my friends anymore. I don't really keep in touch with a lot of people from high school. Oh. Mm-hmm. I can't think of almost one from college. All the people in my life that are a big part now have come through off road. Yeah, that's exactly where I'm at. Right? Well, nope. yeah. Well, Very, firehouse. Extent, yeah, firehouse. We met yeah. at the firehouse, but now all of our friends surrounding yeah. our group is all off road. Yeah. What I find is like you know you you gravitate toward like minded people, and yeah. like the older you get, the less bullshit you're willing to put up with, and yeah, you just kind of realize like, hey, yeah. hey man, there's like this core group of people. I'd rather have quality any day than quantity. Well, it's funny too because you realize quick which the good ones are. Like I've hung out with Jed three times officially now. So yeah. I, I would I would consider yeah. Jed one of my best friends. Yep. Great. Yeah. He, he's a great dude. Like, and I, 
Pers- I don't feel like I know him that well, but I feel like he's I know him more than a lot of people right. do. Well, that's I, I reached straight out to him just on Facebook when I saw what they were doing and knew right away he was somebody I was going to yep. be doing stuff with yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. The, this this industry attracts good people and bad people. It's easy to pick them apart. Yep. Um, the bad people tend to, at least from our experience, tend to not stick around. Yeah. They, they come and go pretty quick. So or, they're, on, or, they're on to the next thing. Or if that, they isolate themselves in the group. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's easy to find. It's so far, it's been easy to find the good ones. And they, the good ones are, are fun, fun to hang out with. Yeah. And I imagine your team is full of dudes yeah. that just all the same, same mindset and just grind hard, push hard and have yeah. fun. This year was definitely special. Like Kenny, Cameron, like, and Brian, like, it, it, we had like I feel like we had a little bit less help, but we had really good help. Again, it um, was it was quality, not quantity. Yeah. I've got I've got a couple couple guys from Jersey that have been coming from. Well, shoot, Mikey, Mikey's yeah. been there since day one. Yep. Mikey Backlars, I mean, he's been to everyone I have, and then uh, Nick and Jer keep showing up, and uh, <laughs> yeah, the boys. Camera was like, hey, I've got got some buddies that I'd like to bring along. Are you cool with it? I'm like. You know, as much as I don't want to deal with like new people at all, yes, because everyone that has come in has come in through that kind of like, hey, I know a guy, he really wants to help, yeah. and we've gotten great people out of it. I wouldn't know Nate otherwise. Yeah, so. yeah and the, the grassroots of it too is like when I went to FRO, I reached out to Schooley. I'm like, he's a family friend of my, my father-in-law. Yep. So I reached out to him. He's like, you can turn a wrench. And I'm like, I can turn a wrench. And I'm like, you want to do a podcast? And he's like, sure. I ended up working on his car, changing spark plugs, just just messing around. But it's, and then coming up your your pit and the, the Bigby pit, it's like, it's just grassroots. Yeah. It's just just dudes that have other jobs coming out here for a good time and and just getting a little rowdy. I was I was picking up some parts a couple hours ago at the uh, at the John Deere dealer, and they were the guys. They were talking to me about like you know what I did for a living and and, and what Miller Motorsports was. And uh, as I was talking about, it, they're like, "Wow, that sounds that's amazing. That sounds incredible." I'm like, "Yeah, but it's really humble. Like yeah, yeah. I've had so many customers come to the shop expecting like." geyser brothers or terrible herps like laboratories and it's not it's a <laughs> yeah. pole barn like like that's what i like about ultra, best ultra four is yeah, yeah. that like some of the best performing teams are really humbly rooted yeah well i tell you this much when i was introduced to miller murder sports i thought that it was going to be geyser and then i met <laughs> the guys and i said this isn't what i thought it was but it was it has consistently been some of the most fun times that we ever have like in the car we have one goal we're professional outside well I mean, unless you listen to what we say in the car <laughs> then maybe it wouldn't be yeah when, when my I, push for live audio and tracking becomes real uh, <laughs> man i think i sign myself up with like yeah. deal with the devil yeah but it, it's it's all good stuff though i mean we're, we're talking crap and you know being goofy but it's we have to do that but like i remember the first trip that i went out with you all it was down to rbd Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. And that was when I realized that, Hey, these are normal humans that just like to have fun and go wheeling. Um, but you all were a lot more than that. Just fast um, wheeling. Oh, dude, me and Eric rolled this razor. <laughs> I don't know are how many all times. your stories about crashing. Yeah, I, was just, <laughs> I was in the pastor seat. I was in the pastor seat. Story about Maybe crashing. he needs to let you drive there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I've done that. I told him for this 24 hour deal, we're going to, we're going to try to hot swap the JK and Lee. He goes, are you serious? She goes, you're going to have to get out to go to the bathroom anyway. Just do a Chinese fire drill. Yeah. We're not getting out to go to the bathroom though. I know. You're, yeah, you're, you're going to need to. You're good. No. You're good. Well, we don't, we don't get out of the race car. <laughs> let me, so let why me, would we get yeah, out of the That's Jeep? only what? Well, let me tell you. hours. Yeah. Smelling long, salts. Yeah. Go, go, go. What I did. All natural, baby. What I did is I went to, I live in, we live in Loudon. So I went to like one of the big heavy lifter gyms. I'm like, I walked into like where's your pro store They're like uh it's over there i'm like all right i walked in the pro store i'm like give me the most ignorant smelling salts you have and the guy's like i couldn't believe how uh, well they worked he's like oh for what and i'm like i need to stay up for 24 hours <laughs> don't ask i'm just i'm gonna have to go down that the rabbit hole of how to stay awake for 24 hours like the biohack of it right because yeah. i remember training for vegas to reno when we ran it in 2012 i was like man i'm gonna have to do this 12 plus hour race in august in 
like 110 yeah. plus degree weather and not get out of the car. How am I going to eat in the car and keep it down? I would go home. I would eat lunch till I felt like I was going to puke. And then I would go run four or five miles oh. and try to keep it down. I'll tell you what, boy, I could eat in the car when it was the dead of summer and keep it down. You know, it I, worked. I didn't even consider the eating part of driving oh, just a we're desert race like that. Well, it's it's 12 hours. You got to fuel yourself. Like yeah. hammers, we can kind of sneak by with, you know, like protein bars. And we Suck do... Suck down a protein bar in the pit kind of thing. Yeah, and we'll do electrolytes and, and be good to go. And you just like, again, you kind of... We were talking about that. like intermittent fasting, right? That's yeah. been huge for me to just like cut breakfast out and eat in a shorter window. So I can go all race day and it doesn't even phase me. I used to be the person that I'm like, if I didn't wake up and eat immediately, uh, I yeah. thought I was going to die. That's how it was. Like I just couldn't function. But now with the intermittent fasting like if i'm busy at work i won't find myself being hungry until like three o'clock in the afternoon yeah, yeah same way so yeah but that's something that is cool about this 24 hour race again it's like pushing yourself and the equipment to what what it's capable so have you guys have you guys ventured outside of ultra four with like um the california 300 or the mint 400 or baja or anything so i ran the mint in 2019 i think uh in one of our cars it was a it was a friend and a customer's car we ran it together but it was one of my chassis uh and the mint's a cool race it is it is rough it is yeah. not that much fun in an ultra four car and the holes are massive and man if i've ever felt like uh what a participant it was at the mint 400 racing its trophy trucks because the race was happening around you and you're just yeah. there uh, when the trophy trucks came by on when they started to lap us uh i it was it was scary it was downright scary i mean the holes were big enough that you could park my car in the bottom and look over top of the roof and these guys are these guys are clipping through at almost you know triple digits and you're like doing 40 trying to stay on top of them and not crash and like I said, I've never felt like more of a participant in some of those rough sections so in my wild. life. That's so wild. It, it, it is yeah. completely wild. And I've always, I, you know, that was like, again, a very humbling moment. I mean, yeah, oh yeah, we're fast. We're driving rock crawlers out there. Yeah. This is the reality of it. Now that was, that was still years ago. We've, everyone's come a long way since then. Yeah, I mean, we've all done, all done different things. That car wasn't near as set up as my current one, but. There was a solid oxygen car that raced this year. And I don't think they, they did that well. Yeah. It's, it's just rough. It's, yeah. it's not that much fun. I won't do the men again in, a, in an ultra four car that's, that's not set up for it. Are you, are you solid for an axle till you die? No, I, no, no, I, are I you honestly, experimenting. <laughs> um, I've considered it. I just, it's so proven. I actually, on the way down here, I was listening to your guys, uh, podcast oh on the motorsports day oh that's which a was one. cool yeah yeah we talked about you on that one yeah so i was i was like all right let's you know just listen to it and yeah that came up and you were talking about looking at the car and uh and you you said one of the most i guess uh things i is a compliment to me you said it's it's the simplest machine for how complicated it is and that is yeah. that is such a compliment because it's so hard with everything going on in an ultra four car to package it and make it look simple because it is not simple at all huh. but i like that aspect of the solid axle um configuration it's tried it's true it's robust um they're always turning the tires over at the end a lot of the fancy new ones are not they're not even making it through the second lap um so I don't know. It's proven. It works. We're making them faster every day. Um, the next one is going to have some updates uh, that will make it even faster. Still solid axle yep. for next year, which is really exciting. And uh, keep keep pushing the envelope of what they're capable of. But but yeah, I don't I don't think you have to have a spaceship to win King of the Hammers. I think that um, there are spots where it helps. But no, I'm not opposed to anything. I've actually yeah. when I build a car that's not solid axle you'll wonder it won't look anything like what I'm driving right now. Makes sense. So you were talking about your shop earlier. Do you do, do you just build race cars or do you do upfitting too? Do would you like take a Wrangler and put a lift? Kit yeah, on we it? do upfits, but it depends on like who it is and what the build is. I try to do more builds. Like we okay. build, we build um, replacement axle assemblies for JKs and JLs and stuff like that. Um, but it, a lot of it's like race derived. Um, so I want to give a customer a vehicle that, you know, if they're, <laughs> If they're not on the same page or willing to listen and learn, I kind of tend to just shy those people away to yeah. go somewhere else because, like, look at the Jeep market, right? And what we're doing with overlanding. Like, why are coilovers such a popular thing on JKs? 
right? Like, why? And why are Dana style? Well, I can tell you this much: when I, I was building my rock crawler, mm -hmm. I wanted coilovers because there were coilovers. Exactly. That's Thank exactly you. why. I was, that was it. I, I was. I was gonna blame you. It's, yeah. it's, the, it's the race world. But but why? It's, yeah, yeah. It, but at the, to that point though too, like why are the Dana style axles so popular? Why does everyone? It's the and name. It's it's all they know. Pirate four x four killed the nine inch axle, nine right? Inches, yeah. Because the nine inch is inherently weak. It's you know twenty eight spline. It's out of a car. Like yeah. there's nothing good about it in stock form, except for the way that Ford designed the third member. And the nine inches, well, 10 inches under the race cars now are nothing near what they used to be. But my God, you can't build a stronger, lighter, lighter axle. But marketing has said that the bigger, badder, better is what you want to put on your Jeep. You need a 70, you need an 80, you need 14 bolts. That is crazy talk. And people just fall for that stuff because it's what the mainstream market tells them they need yeah. and want. And then you get 7,000 pound JKs. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's, that's how we wheel my, my XJ is a, a Dana 30 and an eight and a quarter. And I wheel Beautiful. the piss out of it on 33s and I keep yep. up with the guys on 40s. I believe it. And and it's just because it's about how you, I think it's more about how you drive the rig than the parts you have under it. A hundred percent. I, we built, uh, we built this like junkyard YJ with RCVs and the high pinion 30 and it had an 8.8 .8 in the back and wheeled it at Roush on 35s with no lifts, cut fenders. I think we did every, every black and red trail in Roush and then almost every line on the comp course. I did it with Will from Heavy Metal Concepts and they were just like, all day their jaw was on the ground, like how is this little YG doing it? And it's just the weight and yep. the- Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I met a guy, so. I met a guy at the Cove, Jordan Bosley, who yeah. I think he's a friend of, uh, I guess yours and schoolies. Um, and he's got that little YJ that he, he does comp, uh, it's, it's like a stock stock class comp crawler. Yep. And that thing was in places it shouldn't have no, been. No, absolutely. On a tiny tire, and I think it had nine inch, uh, a thirty three and a nine inch or a eight eight point eight. I can't remember, but I think it was ridiculous. That, that style of wheeling is what got me into what I'm doing. Like I was in a vehicle just like Jordan's, trying to keep up with guys in buggies, and that's what I'm just. Just I'm just going to sell everything by another ZJ. <laughs> Do it. Dude. My last. No, I want to. Uh, yeah. I my last trail rig was a ZJ. Literally, we used JK springs to lift it like two inches. 33s cut fenders. We call it scrap heap because it was just it spare was parts. It was literally parts out of the scrap pile. And it was my, my old XJ wheels. Yep. And I wheeled the piss out of that thing for three years on a Dana 35, stock everything, 300,000 miles on a four liter. That's and, and I'd be guiding a half a million dollars of JL Rubicons behind me on 37s. Yep. And they're all going, oh, well, your Jeep's so built. I'm like, it's stock. Those it's are the best literally builds. literally junkyard. It's literally junkyard parts. Those and are the best builds. That was the yeah. ZJ. It was recycled race car parts. And yep. then we took it on Ultimate Adventure and we're like, okay, this thing would be so much better with the le leather seats and AC. <laughs> Let's build an LJ. So we took a bunch of used old race car takeoffs and built an LJ. And that's one of the coolest, nicest yep. Jeeps I've ever built and yep. wheeled. Yep. Where do you guys store all these vehicles that you build? Oh, I sell them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have too many vehicles already, yeah. so no. <laughs> I was I'm gonna, maybe I'll sell the YJ. Start over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'd be the third Jeep you've mailed on so no, far. No, I'm going backwards. I'm like, I finally dusted off a old old uh, Willie's project. So Nate's mm -hmm. here behind me is like the, uh, what, the, the yin and mine's the yang. Mine's like the nut and bolt original nice. 57 okay. Willie's like... So you know, you're not doing the Jeep rod? No, not the Jeep rod. Mine's a, mine's a family farm Jeep with a lot of history, and uh, it's going to be original and pass it down to my kids and just have nice. a have a nice. Sunday cruiser. Yep. Yeah, I got that one outside, too. That, that one's cool. Which came from him. <laughs> um, yeah, it was a horrible deal. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I, I'm literally... I got the uh, motor at the machine shop and it's getting all redone and we're going to do the same thing that he's doing with his and just make a stalker out of it and yeah. let my dad play with it because I mean, I'm going to have that and just and go him, back road and yeah. do some camping. Yeah, I just want to blow my dad's doors off all the time because <laughs> that's how I like growing up. He had a YJ with 327 and I had a Jeep Cherokee um, and he would just destroy me everywhere. Yeah. And so the competitive part of me is like one day, dad, I yeah. will get you. And I, it is yeah. coming up soon. So he, <laughs> he doesn't know what it's come for him yet. I, I think that whole like family dynamic is what's so appealing to the wheeling, yeah. uh, uh, lifestyle to me my my dad is since passed he was uh he was 86 he lived a good long life he, he died in 2020 but i remember him asking me very specifically when i was gonna stop doing this and i like paused and looked at him funny and i'm like 
dad, I don't think I'm gonna, I think I'll be yeah. your age in four wheel drive vehicles. And hopefully I pass that passion on to my children. I mean, they're already, I mean, they're boys, boys, they're into it already. I mean, they, <laughs> they draw yeah. trucks and equipment and cars and they want to be doing everything we're doing. And heck Nixon's been to, he's five and he's been to six KOHs. Like they've, those children have been to every King of the Hammers in their entire life. Yeah. I don't know of many other people that can yeah. say that. So, uh, I think it'll get passed down to them and like to have that, old willies be something that they're driving i mean man you can't it's hard to buy a car with a manual transmission today yeah right like all that stuff's gonna be lost you're not gonna be restoring new super duties and stuff they, nope. they just can't they go to they go to scrap no yeah. they're just planned, planned off the so and... complicated yes no. yeah so it's been a big word of mine yeah mm-hmm. not to go back um i will just interject and say you all have screwed up because I started my wheeling with a Samurai, and that, oh, is the, that's dope. that is the best wheeling vehicle ever known to man. I will fight people. It's too many it. transfer cases for me. <laughs> Dude, I did have a couple <laughs> so, well, transfer cases. I, I will levers. say, we, we are historically the anti-Jeep Jeep Club. Yeah. We just use them because they're the, the best multi-tool. I hate Jeeps. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I remember being so against Jeeps, and now I have... Too. Oh yeah, so this, I, is, also, this is a Jeep, Jeep though. You I've also got you two. can't count that. I yeah. can't disagree. I I love the heritage. I love what. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I, I love the history behind them, but. I've owned a Samurai. I'm not a guy, right? Like, I don't no, like to define myself as a, a Ford guy. I, I mean, remember we owned that Samurai. Like, it was the same thing that everybody was just saying. Like, it was leaf sprung. Uh, yeah. Spring over 33s with, I don't know, I was making no dollars per hour. And so I just, you know, put junkyard tires on it and stuff. And we went to the Cove because it's 20 minutes up yeah. the road. And me and my dad he was in his yj i was in my samurai and we were just wheeling what all we went up to bunny hole of course it's the yep. nostalgic gore thing and we were just doing everything that we could do and he was like you can't follow me i was like huh, yeah i can and there was one time that i beat him and it's i i hold that over him <laughs> so much still to this day i was like <laughs> i went over that but man me and that little samurai that's why zuki nate's my screen name and okay. that's what it's always that been. But th- that is that is exactly where you, you have to start there. If you yeah. don't start with with nothing, I don't think you appreciate oh yeah all of it when you get there. Yep. Like if you don't start wheeling junk, I used to wheel lawn tractors yeah. because I I, do, yeah. I don't come from a, an automotive background or anything yeah. like that. Like I've been self taught through most of this stuff, and like I, I wasn't allowed to have a quad when I was younger. I you know I was I was pretty much stuck on bikes. And we had a little garden tractor with some uh, V treads in the back. Yep. And guess what? I put that thing up every hill it would climb until it would turn over backwards. So my dad, <laughs> I get, you I know get my yelled dad. at for getting my tractor stuck in the field all the time. <laughs> yes. My wife's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "I was just trying to mow over there." Yeah, uh, and my, I'm up wrestling it out by myself, my right, dad, riding it like a snowmobile, leaning on one side yeah. of the roll over. Yeah, yeah. Dude, my dad growing up, uh, like he knows my dad, so he understands where I'm coming from. But like he had this wheel horse, and he loved this wheel horse. <laughs> And he took it in the garage one night and he painted, like, I love you, Dad, but the worst flames ever <laughs> on yeah. the side of it. And then he got this chrome smokestack and put nice. on it. And, like, at, at the point where I was, like, seven learning how to drive this tractor, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Breathing in the exhaust fumes is horrible. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah. And we had a couple rocks in the yard, so I was always driving over rocks. It's kind of funny to look at, like... How everything is like that was probably one of the earliest moments yeah. that I rock crawled without knowing it. And then me and dad, we I bought my uh, XJ when I, that was my first vehicle. And then me and him Hell did yeah. a long arm like we built long arms out of like two by two square tubing. Yep. And like because I was looking at Clayton stuff, I'm like, that's the shit. That's what I want. <laughs> Once a Winchester medals and I like, you know, I, and before I got the Jeep, I was splitting wood for two years at five dollars an hour to to buy the $1,300 tires and wheels. It took forever. You'll I will always so remember much your first set of tires oh and wheels. Oh my gosh, yep. yeah. And man, I remember me and dad, we built that long arm kit. We put the you know four inch lift or six inch lift, whatever the heck it was on it. And I finally saved up enough money to get those tires and wheels and uh, put them on. I was like, I went to school and I was like, I am the coolest kid ever. <laughs> And, uh, and I wasn't, but I felt like it because I <laughs> yeah, built yeah. it. Like yeah. I built, I saw all the kids that had all the stuff that was, you know, you know, mommy and daddy bought and like, you know, good on them. Like I wish that I would have had something like that. I don't actually no, wish no. that. Yeah. I'm, but so, like, I'm so, I'm so happy with the, yeah. yeah the but junk. it's just funny looking at where it's all progressed because like literally because I built that first Jeep, then I built my Samurai and then I built that gold buggy and then I built my, I don't know what the hell I built that, but I built school buses, uh, 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 40, 
800 car. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I helped you all build that one car. I built a couple like rock bouncer things. Yep. And now I'm building this stupid Jeep. And it's just like, if I look at the last 12 years, I'm like, holy crap. I built some, and it all came from RC rock crawling too. Oh like, no. I, I started oh. at RC, I built chassis for RC rock crawling until I got my license. And then as soon as I got my license, I was like, wow, that was stupid. Um, but like <laughs> I, I built those RC rock crawlers for years, you know, from 13 to 16. And then now I'm building real full ones. size ones. It's weird, man. It's weird to look back at all that kind of stuff. I think, you know, you've made it when your full size becomes an RC. Yeah. Yeah. That was super, super <laughs> that cool. was wild. I was so tempted to buy one. I'm like, I need one of those, but I'm like, I don't need another expensive hobby. Yeah. I've helped guys like for the last decade, I'll, like a couple of year would e email me. Hey, could we get the, like the files for your graphics? I'm like, yeah, you know, you're building, you think my car's cool enough to build a scale version of it? Hell yeah. I'll send you the graphics. Like I always supported yeah. that. And then what, three years ago, RC four wheel drive came to me and they're like, Hey, we want to build a production version of your car as an RC. And I'm like, really? That's rad. That's wild, yeah. Okay. What does that mean? And we kind of went down this route. Oh, it'll, you know, it'll be a year, three years later we got it done and it came out and it's been a hit Dude. and a success. Yeah, they're and so cool. So cool. Oh, I love them. I'm so pumped on it. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm not an RC guy and I'm slowly becoming one. Cause yeah. like my kids are into it yeah. that like I've met a lot of people in that community and it's, it is badass. Yeah, like, it's a big community around here. It's too, huge. Right? Like what's really cool about the car is 90% of the people buying it don't know who I am. They don't know about King of the Hammers. They don't know about anything. And they're, cr so they're crossover, right? They're guys outside of this that's quick, industry that's cool. and they're now becoming, you know, people that are submerged into, 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 the into this. Into the Ultra Force Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. Really so is, cool. is it cool watching your boys rip around in your uh, RC version so cool. of your car? <laughs> so cool. And, and my oldest now, he's like, he's big into drawing and he's really talented at it. So he's been drawing all the stuff and he's, he's drawn every pro chassis on the team, mine and Casey's <laughs> and Josh and Rusty. And it's really cool to see but i remember being a little kid and like looking up to things like gravedigger gravedigger oh, yeah. was oh, yeah. like that probably i <laughs> i had the opportunity last year at pri to meet dennis anderson and dennis anderson doesn't know me from the next guy but i saw him at the end of like saturday he was standing there with his son and i'm like you know what i at least got to go over and shake this guy's hand <clears throat> and tell him what an impact he's had on my life because he doesn't he doesn't think twice about it he just wants to you know go run in the mud yeah, and and that's, all, that's all he's doing now is running in the mud exactly it's, and king sling is and, just <laughs> doing king sling things. and it's crazy what that whole Sorry. him and bob chandler what what all those guys built from just wanting to lift their trucks and go yeah. run in the mud yeah and so you know i kind of told him my my whole short story and Dennis had tears in his eyes and Adam, his son's jaw was on the ground like, wow, because they realized the impact they had on one person's life. It really like yeah. set the trajectory of what I was doing all because of that one truck. And there's Dennis now signing die cast cars for my kids, not even knowing it. He is a guy that works for him that, um, you know, follows what we do. And they're like, hey, you think the boys would like this? I'm like, yes. And now they Absolutely. got a Gravedigger plush toy and we're going to Monster Jam in May in <laughs> Philly. Like, hell yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's, yeah. it's badass though. So hats off to all those guys, like the pioneers that didn't even know that they were. And our industry would be nowhere without them. Well, you know? and the, the coolest thing now about Dennis is he's not driving Gravedigger anymore. He's yeah. just having fun driving King Sling. Yeah. So that's the, all he does. So the, is drive a mud truck. Probably the coolest thing to me about the whole Grave Digger thing. You know, meeting Dennis was was awesome and humbling, and I'm glad I had that opportunity. One of the best drivers in the whole Monster Jam series now is a young kid named Tyler uh, Menninga, and yep. he's. I remember Tyler when he was 9, 10, 11 years old coming to the Badlands. Every year he'd come in my pit. And I always take the time to talk to kids when they come in the pit because I remember being that kid at those races yeah. and shows. And, like, it it means a lot. So, you know, you're always too – you're always busy. You're always doing something. But I always take the time to talk to the kids. And this kid came, and I remembered him the second year. And the third year he came by, I was like, huh, this kid's, like, definitely into it. And I always ask him engaging questions. I'm like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. Right? Always want to hear the kids out on I want to drive monster trucks, he says. At like 12 years old, I'm like, dude, you can absolutely do that. Yeah. Like, you put your mind to it, now he's one of the best drivers on the circuit. And he's yeah. <laughs> he's taking my kids and showing them around the pits in May. Like, yeah. it's yeah. so crazy. He's driving the most famous monster truck ever. And winning. And yeah. winning. He is yeah. by far, in my opinion, the most talented driver in the series. Yeah. For sure. Those when guys are those guys are crazy. When you watch them freestyle, I mean, yeah. it's it's just like the whole trophy truck thing. Like, it's amazing what the dynamic of the vehicle just due to its design. Um, 
I wouldn't call them constraints, you know, the sure. fact that yeah. they have, I mean, they can just pause the truck on the nose yeah. and just yeah. stand there and sit, just yeah. drive it on the bike willy nilly. It's the mass of the tires. Yeah. Right. Like just the fact that you can control it. Like, well, that's talent. Yeah. That's you know, the, the, like, the car control involved with making that vehicle do that and look how far they've come from just like old leaf spring trucks jacked up to like jumping cars yeah it was running over cars now they're doing front flips now there's no cars even on the track yeah right yeah yeah it's really cool yeah i still want to do it oh yeah like i i don't care what anybody that's still (laughs) the goal yeah like i remember (laughs) when uh we were out we got the virginia giant down the street that's right yeah you're right it's literally five minutes down the road but i remember when we went out pre-running and uh, you were driving the side by side, and you were like, "Nate, you can just drive the race car." I was like, "That at, to me at that moment, I was like, that's my mo- that's my grave digger.' You're a monster truck. Oh guy. my god, yeah. 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 And I like your, he was in front of me, your, so your I was. Roman Empire? Oh, dude, I was driving like an idiot. <laughs> like an <laughs> it's a idiot. race car can handle it. Yeah, I know, but I was just like every time that he would like get out in the distance, I was like, "All right, nobody's looking," and yeah. I'll just go. <laughs> And like, it was so funny because I was like, wow, this is so much different than my leaf sprung samurai. Like, oh my God, it handled whoops. And like, you can drive it. Over. Like, honestly, like he's a really good driver. Don't get me wrong. He's great. I think I could beat him in his race car. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> like, I've, uh, no, I, I know I couldn't, but I, I, I do think that I could, uh, in the right circumstance, push you off the track like I did in the bro light and yeah, whip you. Wow. Uh, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I, I was the only person to beat you on bro light racing yeah after you pitted me oh, man. We'll, we'll let that one go that, was, that sounds like an HR issue <laughs> yeah. take Dude, that to HR we, they, these guys that was another re, like I think that being around like minded people talk about bro lights for a little bit because that was what, awesome that's, is, are you just saying pro light or bro light no 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 what is bro light bro light is the dildos are outside <laughs> like <laughs> like it, it, it's right. funny, but they it, are. They are. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, I, I'm not kidding you. Stock two wheel drive Rangers from like the mid '80s to whenever <laughs> the dildozer. The dildozer, man. I was fucking up the competition. <laughs> Can that be the name? Of you, the were yeah. you were dozing. You were dozing. Can that be the name of the episode? The dildozer, the dildozer with Eric Miller. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my god, it was. Those are some of the best times in trucks. We d- we decided like racing's expensive. I mean, there's no way around oh. it. I was I was fortunate enough to get into this early when it was still grassroots. I mean, shit, I qualified qualified for king of the hammers in a in a raisined yj on air shocks it was beat to hell, hell and yeah, like brother. like dude it was trust me we were grass as grassroots as it comes and i'm like man there's got to be a more affordable way to get because you know after we built my my first ultra four car and you know started winning races everybody's like wow if I had that car, I could do the same thing. I'm like, shut up. You could have somebody write you a six figure check and you'd piss it away. Like you, it's, it's not about money. It's about, yeah. it's about j- focus and drive. And I've seen this in motorsports my entire life. There's a lot of good examples. Like people can say, well, must be nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's real easy to say, but did you do it? Did I you busted act- my ass doing this. Yeah. So it is did nice. Did you actually I do it? I dedicated my entire life to it. Okay. Yeah. Did you do it? So I'm like, all right, let's come up with a series where these guys can put up or shut up. Let's build these cheap budget trucks and do like short course racing in a field. Like, why not? Everybody can buy a $500 Ranger, put a cage in it and come race with us. So we came up with this idea of bro light racing. We t- That's fantastic. We came, we, it came from short course. I mean, they were doing, you know, okay, pro light, right? And they were doing these stadium stock trucks out west and they were just any two-wheel drive old style pickup truck but i wanted it to be more spec i didn't want <laughs> I, I said if anybody can build one of these come out and beat me hats off to you right that's why i have a production chassis you beat me in my own car hats off to you sir and because it's about more seriously it's it, <laughs> i beat you yeah. <laughs> yeah you beat me when i broke you beat me <laughs> no you spun out the one race hey yeah, it wins believe me i remember this stuff yeah i know uh well you can't you can't win them so all, when right? was the era of, era of bro light when did bro light happen? was it was 2000 or like 2011 12 okay should, you should bring 13. That, you should bring that back Definitely bring i that think back. So. i know where there's a two wheel drive no, it, was, it was way later than that it was You're right because uh, i already won hammers yeah 16 i think okay, so that's a nice thing it's, they gave time off of 10 years old i mean dude these are like <laughs> yeah, but which time yeah yeah <laughs> 12 <laughs> 12 yeah so but but anyway it's it's cheap affordable racing and man if you if you like go-karts 
you'd love bro lights because it's dirt and jumping and cheap trucks and you know i got, i have a guy that has access to a lot of land in west virginia mm-hmm. he might be willing to put on a bro light race well that's awesome because that the side of the promotion is what just sucked like yeah. it was fun to put the trucks together but to jet. organize the races and get everybody together like, i got i got jet on board for class 11s man jet class, could be, class 11s in west virginia dude, Hell yeah. that would be a great uh class to have with the bro lights i mean but we started piggybacking onto events like rolling w ranch would have races and and hold us and we we went all over with them but we went up to new york yeah we went batavia, to batavia new york. yeah that was cool yeah. they're kind of like little you could take them to fairs and race like outside of a figure eight race or demo derby you could run bro lights like i kind of want to get it going back in cumberland but it's it is a lot of time they were and, wild because like in batavia dude, there was fast we were jumping 60 feet to flat three times oh. per lap in a in, ranger in oh, a yeah. ford ranger Stop. what the fuck yeah and Stop. i oh dude oh Stop. yeah I mean, they're, I daily. Drove. I mean, they're gutted. They're, they're, tor- they're torsion bars, so yeah. like they got some. No, these were these were the. Uh, the well, we would put TJ Front Springs T- TTB, but they're not TTB because they're the two wheel drives, so right? The, whatever they yeah. call. I, I'll find the video of you launching yours at uh, where the heck? Badlands. Was that? Badlands. Yeah. Badlands. Mine was well, I don't know. God. Twenty. So you guys traveled. You guys traveled with these far. Not oh, yeah. not super bad. Yeah, we put them on a wedge. We, we put four way. on a wedge and go. I'm and just saying this. This has got like. Like uh, you want East Co- East Coast cl- grass? Yeah, I cannot uh, talk. East Coast grassroots racing. This has Cletus vibes all over. It's, it, it's bro lights for sure. Yeah, well, I just want somebody else to do it. But and the I'll just thing show was, up. is like up in New York, I mean, we like <laughs> we were jumping them, you know, sixty feet to flag three times per lap and, and doing twenty laps, and then just and and we're finishing it. And they like, loved it. Yeah, like the trucks are so resilient. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah they, and like it didn't feel hard like it hurt a little bit but it wasn't that <laughs> bad it, it, was, was, like a, it was like a good hurt yeah it was really, a good hurt as, it really as was. good as they were i i really wanted to build just for fun like a super bro light yep. like one with beavers and external bypasses yep. like these were like two oh like maybe reservoirs on the shocks up on the wall yeah like Those are they the were light shocks. that was as much as you were allowed to spend on yeah. shocks we allowed a reservoir but you can have a clicker on it like it was cheap budget you had to put a fuel cell and a dry cell battery and that's it cage yep. and harness and seats send it Nope. And that you was, put a steering quickener in it because you couldn't you couldn't drive them without it. No, um, it was it, it'll service. always be the funnest racing that I've ever done. Yep, and so. like I remember, you know, because I was still like I I still thought that you were cool um, back then. <laughs> um, and but I was like I was honestly like you know I was giddy because I got to race against Eric Miller. Oh, dude, we got to go door to door so many yeah, times. So How often you to go door to door with your friends like yeah. on the weekend? Never. Like guys go to the never. bar. We've never. We did it once. We did it once. We did it once. And we were can't tell that story. Smashing like we I were doing did, it every weekend. Yeah, and I smashed <laughs> like I did. I was too aggressive close a course, couple times. Course. We both. Oh, absolutely. But we were just. It was so much fun because like all, other than the one time that I did boost you off the track that you weren't real happy with. Like yeah. after afterwards we were always like dude that was the funnest thing that we've ever done that one time you weren't that stoked but i deserve <laughs> that um no that, that was awesome that was so much fun yeah every time. it is it is a good time so anytime you can get get all your buddies together and, and i remember how to drive those was you you only you kept the f- yep. like, pedal to the metal and you just you just dumped with the, the clutch. clutch yeah that you was just it. pushed it in or yep. let it out and yeah, it going would just up hills pivot just, the truck because yep. they don't have a ton of power but they're light so they scoot yeah I remember going up a couple of the hills, like it would kind of bog down. So I would just push the clutch in real quick, what? let it rev up and just dump it, <laughs> yep. just dump it. And it was just like, oh, oh, it's oh. It's out of the truck world. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Good times. They were so but much fun. That's why it's still outside. Yeah, like, we, we keep hoarding them. Like yeah. we won't let them go. Mine haven't run in years, but they're still rotting in I the parking lot. I just can't get rid of it. I know, because they're just, so awesome. Like I got rid of both my side-by-sides. I get rid of everything. I've, I can't get rid of that. Yeah, I don't care. I'll sell everything too, but I don't know. Yep, yep, the dildos. Maybe we'll bring them back. It, it, dude, the name was great. But See, that's the other it thing. It was that, all gold. That's the other thing that the monster truck guys got right is all the trucks have the a name. Yeah. Yeah. The name. Yeah. Like, what? Did, my car doesn't have a name. Yep. I had the name. It was the only <laughs> gold truck on the whole circuit, and it had the biggest font just dildos are right down the bedside it was so you're talking funny. about your bro light not a bro light yeah because yeah, no, 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 no. it's also gold it's also gold it's yeah. also gold yeah, yeah. he stole it from me <laughs> man god damn it yeah. my father-in-law has an old it's not even old it's like an 04 he still drives it every day ranger short bed single cab and i'm just like Craig, whenever you get ready to sell that, like nope. I need a little daily. Hats off to three. hats off now to all the people car. that have figured out that shitbox life is the way. Dude, oh, it's so no car so payments, 
No if cares. You go far enough back in episodes, we have multiple <clears throat> episodes about shitbox life. Yep. I love yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, because we both daily shitbox lives. Yeah. Like, like we're. we're I off think for, everyone sitting here does. We're, we're yeah. off for guys, <laughs> but like, like I, w- I was at the gym yesterday, and some lady, I was wearing my Miller Motorsport shirt, coming out of the gym. Some lady's like, "Oh, what's that? Like, is that, it's got your car on it?" Right. She was driving a, a, a Wrangler. Oh, cool. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's like. Ray, offered racing stuff and we were talking about jeeps and everything she's like so where's your jeep i'm like oh i'm too smart to drive my jeep yeah, every day yeah. and she looked at me she's like what you say i'm like yeah. <laughs> every day at the shop right well oh, what jeep do you drive i i don't i, I have don't. an 08 honda civic yeah i've got i've got what? an 09 sonata yeah you have I, a jeep shop and you don't drive a jeep I yeah say, i have to get to work every I day i hate to say it like <laughs> you know everybody's we've kind of defined this like idea of this jeep guy i think the, I think the real guys don't actually drive their rigs every day no absolutely not <laughs> No, I the guys I want to go wheel broken. with, at least. Yeah. yeah, my car is a Honda Accord with 300,000 yep. miles on it. Yep, yeah. mine's, mine's 310. I have a 204 Caravan. Yep. Oh, yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, you you win on that one. Oh, yeah. Dude, he drove Free up the PRI 99. with all of the race car parts in the back of the van. In the I've van? Two, <laughs> I've had two, two, two Pro van? chassis slap packed in that. That thing has timbrins in the back, so it'll haul more weight. I mean, and you, a, you and a methods on it, too. Methods and The wheels cost more than the van. They do. The van was free. Absolutely. Yeah, dude, there's a video of him a couple months ago boosting it up his driveway his driveway is like a 15 percent grade (laughs) and it was snowy and his wife got stuck i guess and like he backed up he backed up up the other person's driveway and just wooded it just that caravan was just floating the valves just screaming up it it was hilarious the old tree tree yep and that's that that like after i realized that like yeah he's a really he he is a talented driver, but he also doesn't give a shit. I, mean, that's I was what like, makes you talented. He's yeah. not giving yeah, a shit. Yeah. You have to have like, a little bit of no care. Yeah. yeah. But man, I was like, I think that I can fit in with these guys because I never cared, nor did I have skill. Yeah. But he did, and then I got to learn a little bit from him. I you drive, I you, dri- you drive with no regard for mechanical well well being. No, I always got upset when people are like, you, you, Dom. In certain situations, you can't. No, you can't. Like, have, like that's or self well being. Like you have to, you have to put all that aside and just go. I like uh, this year at the Hammers when I stayed over with Dom and them. This year, um, our buddy Dom used to work with Eric a lot. He was, he's the. He's just the man. He's the he's the guy. Dom, <clears throat> I give Dom credit for most of the pro chassis devi- design and development. But like, for sure. I, I'm a person that doesn't like to talk good in front of somebody's face. I only talk good you know, behind, behind their, their yeah, back. Nate, Nate yeah. likes to talk shit to your that's face. My, my yeah, talk good that's behind my, your yeah. back. That's why we're so. Me and Dom were. See, I don't like this because I'm talking good about you. Um, He's not here. Yeah, 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 yeah. okay. But we were, we, were, we were talking about Eric, and uh, Dom was like, "Dude, the moment that I realized that Eric was a like." next level driver is you were somewhere i don't know where you were wheeling but there was this ledge that you were trying to climb up and most people would have like hit it a couple times and been like no i i can't make it and dom was like dude he was there for like hours or just on the wood of this your old jeep trying to make this climb of some sort and he was like he would not quit until he made it or broke and i was like that's that's how he drives. That's that's it. I don't know the particular instance, but he was I, like talking about that one that one instance, and he was like he was not giving up, and he was like that guy's different. Not not a fan of bypasses. <laughs> no, and that's all we do is we race bypasses anymore. It's sickening. <laughs> that that irks me about hammers to no no end. The the beauty of that place, the difficulty of that place, and well, the we fact- and we race around it. Like this year, this year was the race was long. It was tough. It was annoying. It wasn't hard. We it wasn't hard. We drove around all the good rocks, and it's it's just a point of contention for me because it would be so easy to place two cones and two people and say you got to go through the gates. They had one set of gates, and guys were still going around them. And I just yeah. I just don't get it. We're here missing VCPs for we're no, driving, no reason. Yeah, we're at the like one of the most epic places in the entire world for rock crawling, and we're driving around the rocks. well. And the core of it is for fun. Why else are you out there other than have uh, you, you're there to well, win? But, but like, you're there to have fun, and you're there to do the rock trails. It, it's tough because you know these lines get burned in, and you're there to race and win. So like, yeah, you, you're not going to go run the hardest lines. It doesn't make any sense. You've got to get from point A to be the fastest. But the course, it gets, it could be done differently to make it harder. Um, the area, the area lends to it. There's stuff we haven't run. They do a good job, but like this year, the course, in my opinion was a little disheartening because we went around all the good stuff. Yeah. For sure. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. This year. Absolutely. I mean, it was still a fun race. Absolutely fun. It's always fun. I definitely think that Ultra 4 is going in the right direction with like the VCPs and stuff like that. Yes. But they just, 
they got to figure out a little bit more. Yeah. That kind of lends into like the future of the sport. And we're all kind of trying to figure that out now is like how to, how to score it, how to keep it safe. Um, you know, how to keep everybody honest. There has to be a standardized tracking, timing, safety, video, audio system in each car that the cars are built with and around. You can't put on third party trackers after every race. And I hate to even bring this up cause it's going to date, good? it's going to date this podcast, but we have pending penalties that I know that are not true. That yeah. we, we hit the VCPs and they said we didn't because the tracker pinged wrong. And Dude, that sucks. That was like because my, well, they're pinging every 60 seconds, so it doesn't well, know exactly it, where you're at. It, well, I, and I'm, I'm still waiting for the data to show where it said we were because I know we hit the VCPs. Yeah. And they're still looking through that? I, I can't even get a response. And guess what? It's for podium positions. I hate to say it because I don't yeah. even care at this point. Yeah. It, it's not you know, the difference the, between winning, winning and losing, but it's the difference between second and third. Yeah. There was yeah, and second th and third. Well, really third and fourth. And, like th and that means a lot to your sponsors. Is uh, they yeah. It means a lot to everybody. No one cares at this point. It's just the principle of, it. I don't care third or fourth. I didn't win. No. Right. We're there to win. If you ain't first, but last. across <laughs> the board, that, whether I come out on the upside of it or downside of it, I want the race to be fair. I've always yeah, said sure. that I want They're, everyone to be held accountable for the penalties they do commit and you know, the things it should all be a, even playing. Yeah, and there's two yeah. VCPs that we got hit that we drove almost out of the way to hit, to make sure that we hit it. Like you and went off the, 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 the we we drove, drove long to yeah. make sure we hit them. There was like a, a path the, that you could like cut inside where you could to, see where everyone was taking and yeah. you're like, Hey, we're not doing that. No. Cause and like in the VCP also has a counter that basically tells you how far away you are from the actual like node or the actual point. And that's, this is new this year, this system, yeah. this rally safe. And so every time that like, you know, I would see the number starting to count down, you know, we would drive closer and closer and closer until that number was, you know, single digits, you know, maybe 10 or whatever. And anything below, uh, you know, in the, in the desert 50 or whatever, yeah. or 150 in the desert. And then in the rocks 50, like we were good, but we were like single digits almost every single time. And when we got hit with those, I was like, how, like, there's no way, no way. Yeah. It's, it seems like for the sport being so cut in over the last, what, 2007, they started 2008. Yeah that they're still learning a lot. There's still a lot of ground to go, but well, in, in, there's nothing else like it in, in the there's real no other form of racing. Yeah, like in it. the reality of sports, it's only, it's not even 20 years old yet. No. It's still brand new. Yeah. yeah. This is still brand new racing and they still have a lot to learn. Yeah. And we're getting there. They're getting there. You'll see that implemented. We have the technology with, um, you know, Starlink now. I mean, to be able to live, just the fact that they can even have a live show and stream from the course out it's in the amazing. middle of nowhere. It yeah. is amazing. So like hats off to them. I don't want to be in that position to promote no, it and put no. it on and score it and all that. But like, we got to get better <clears throat> and we're working towards it. And again, like I said, the difference between fourth and third, whatever, it's, but it does matter. And it's every single year yeah. there's disputes. We can't release results right away. And we're not talking for like 10th and 11th place. We're talking for like the podium and the win. Yeah. Well, so yeah, like Terry's fight that he did two years ago went viral, like across even out of off road, it went across all motorsports. Yeah. You saw Terry's fight everywhere. It's a lot. It's just yeah. There's too much on the line to you know still be looking at stopwatches and having w not having redundant tracking, right? Yeah. Like how we don't have three ways of checks and GPS tracks. Yeah. I mean, there's like there's teams that put millions of dollars. Like I mean, just the Blylers themselves, the the setup that they have created to come out and race for something not to necessarily be dialed in it, it's like in it's kind of insane yeah and and like i said they're, and they're definitely not getting there and they're, they're not alone no, no they're getting absolutely there. not they're well, getting but there. it's but it's such a new and uh, like there's no former racing like it yeah. and and that's the logistical challenge that's what usac faces and fights and they kind of come into the game late and try to try to figure it out so everybody's on the right page and like they're working towards a common goal. So that's why I'm not going to sit here and badmouth it or bash it uh, because everybody's trying to get better with it. That's just how it is. So um, I'm, I'm optimistic for the future. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're, the, do, they're the, doing cool things to, to try and change it. The yeah. regional series is, is coming back with the transfer and ownership. That's a good thing. Um, you know, we're talking about options for uh, charters and for, like the future of the sport to be, you know, not held by one person. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and the, the racers to have a voice and control it. So I think it's going in the right direction. Um, 
I'm optimistic. I think this will be a year for growth and uh, and learning. Uh, the schedule got condensed a little bit, which I'm not really upset about. I mean, we lost some East Coast yeah, uh, I was bumped races. To go. I, yeah. It sucks Pennsylvania went because it was such a good good track but it, was, I, it had a huge turnout for, it for had what a great it turnout. Was. yeah i think i think you'll see it back though I, th- I think it's great badlands is back on the schedule that's a good event and i think like the fact that west virginia is open to opportunity i think we could see something there one day so you know i can't unless you're <laughs> man it does nothing irks me more than somebody to just you know talk and not have action about well i wish we had a race here it's like why i drove down to the capital yeah. in west virginia to meet yeah. meet senator mannard and and see what opportunities are there like we need action from people to make this stuff happen yeah. so and I, not not to stroke be away but be away is putting in the putting in the work mm-hmm. to make that happen and bring bring yeah. competitive motorsports to the east coast like they're doing drift appalachia in a few weeks yep. and there's people flying from I can't say who, but there's people flying from Japan that may have started the drift movement to come out and drift in Appalachia. That's sick. I mean, dude, we have so many great opportunities and resources here that are just untapped. Like, I started running a a hill climb in Flintstone, Maryland, okay? It's called the the Polish Mountain Hill Climb, and it's got roots that date back to Carroll Shelby. Mm -hmm. It's an event he ran and won back in the 50s. And I took my Ultra 4 car out to it. And that's, I think, the beauty of Ultra 4 is you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, those guys, man, were they, the Pennsylvania Hill Climb Association puts it on. I reached out to them. I kind of cold called them. I said, hey, I'm local. I live close. I want to bring this out. And they're like, yeah, absolutely not. We just had a, we had our first real incident up in, uh, what, what's the, What's the track in the Poconos that, you know, where they run the Pocono 500, they had a event there and okay. a car blew a corner and went into the spectator area. Mm. And, uh, no one was, I don't believe anyone died or was seriously hurt, but they, it was like an insurance thing. Yeah. <clears throat> and the insurance company was like, okay, what are you guys doing? And here I am asking to bring a, you know, four wheel drive truck with a high center of gravity out to a road race hill climb. They're like, yeah, no, I'm like, no, you guys don't understand. Like I'm not some hillbilly that's bringing like a mud buggy out and going to make a mockery of your race. Like I'll show up. Uh, We're a professional race team. The car will be set up for it. And I promise I won't be the slowest car there. I'm not going to win this thing by any means, but we'll be competitive. Yeah. Is it Levi had the red dragon out at, uh, Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak. Yeah, Levi brought his car out to Pikes Peak. And I'd been doing this hill climb stuff, um, previous to the whole Pikes thing too. Well, they ran Pikes a long time ago too, but Levi was just out a couple years ago. Um, but the short of it was that we showed up, uh, that Saturday morning and it had rained all night and the road they've since resurfaced it, but it had really poor shoulders and, uh, it was, you know, it was tacky, but it had a lot of like material on it, like just dirt and like the, the cinders of the asphalt when it gets ground up. And yeah. so those cars, apparently that's a thing. Like these guys are like dusting their tires off in the start line. It's like, it's crazy what the hill climb guys go through to get tenths of a second off their time. I'm just like, all right, well, I got spools and hydraulic steering, so (laughs) I'm going to try to keep this thing on the road today, okay? And uh, I had the third fastest time up the hill in the morning because of the four-wheel drive. Yeah. Yeah. And after the first run, (laughs) they go, um, they go, sir, that was, that was actually very impressive, but we're going to have to ask you to not, uh, leave the road surface <laughs> because you are cheating because you are roosting dirt onto the track wow. yeah. and we can't have that with the other cars. It will crash them. And I'm like, but it's not illegal. Right. And he said, well, it's not illegal. I said, okay, so it's like a sportsmanship thing. I actually am sorry. I had no idea. Yeah. I said, I just know that the rules of road racing are straighten out the corners. Yeah. Well, my truck will go across that ditch. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah. and, and we've since all, you know, it's it's a cool thing. Like I go back every once in a while and still race with those guys and have a lot of good friends from it, and they loved it. I think I ended up ninth out of ninety cars over Damn, the weekend, which cool. was I was really pumped on because all we did was like take some preload out and hook up, hook up limit straps and race. Yeah. So it had it, it did have smaller tires, but there's a we'll see the uh, the twin turbo Jeep rod out there next year. Yeah, dude. Oh my! I want to take it to Pikes Peak really bad. Well, Pretty guess cool. what? We're going to Pikes Peak this year uh, just to just to see it and spectate. And yeah. next year, uh, Optima has has asked us to come out and and compete in it, put a good effort in with the Ultra Four car. So we talked about doing it this year, but it was too much too soon. Yeah. So 2025, we're going to go to Pikes with okay. the Ultra Four, set up right. You know, yeah. like 
break bias, hopefully some work in the diffs. Yeah. Not tractor status up the mountain. There's a <laughs> take there, the spools out, maybe put some LSDs in it. Exactly. There's yeah. a good one out of Hershey PA that's a hill climb. They, Which one? Um the AACA does it, the okay. Antique Automobile Club. Okay. Um I don't know if they would let your truck run because it's all classic cars, but they run it with the um the Concord Dale Algon show that they do okay. with the museum up the, there. The PA Hill Climb guys, they they want me to come up to the one outside of Wilkes Bear where okay. there's where there's a there's yep. a jump at the top. Like the cars have to check for it to not get too much air. Yeah. And they're like, dude, you could straight send this thing off it and you know, you'd be gaining <laughs> seconds on these guys. Yeah. But it's just like a big party. Like it's it's up a hill where there's you know, it's residential, so everybody comes out in their front yep. yard and they park their RVs and it's a good crowd. Like I have been to top fuel events. I've been to drag races. I don't want anything to do with that crap. Those yeah. guys are just like, they won't even look at you. Yep. If you're competition, these hill climb guys, they're, they're just like off-road guys. You know, yep. if somebody needs something, they'll help them. And yeah. I think they're a little closed with what they're doing to their cars, but you know, they want everybody to do well. I, that's what I love about off-road racing. It's just like, I grew up, playing sports and learning etiquette like golf etiquette is you want to you want to beat everybody at their best and yeah. i've never wanted to be anyone that had yeah i always wanted to be a better driver i didn't want it to be because their equipment failed or they didn't have something um so i think that's a big thing you know that you got to teach teach kids young right yeah. beat them on the track not in the pits beat them at their best you want to be the yeah. best beat them at their best that's yep. why i like king of the hammers and i'll drive to california i want to beat the best in the world and that's where everybody goes have you done any of the Line Mountain stuff? I love Line Mountain. Line I Mountain. I need to go to a race so bad. Line That's Mountain awesome. I started doing in 2010 in my Ultra 4 car, and we had some growing pains there. Um, I've since become, like, family with a lot of the people there that put it on, and, you know, they're lifelong friends. But it didn't always – it could have not gone that way, um, and there's definitely people there that – don't like what we bring to the track because we kind of changed the entire dynamic of that entire, yeah. that entire race association and track because years past they were just like small tired vehicles. And I mean, we've even redefined the track yeah, that, with that. That is homegrown racing at its yeah, very best. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just bigger tires and suspension and everything else. Like when these quote unquote rock crawlers started showing up, we were not that well received because we started showing up in these rock crawlers and they start, and we started doing well in these rock crawlers. I won the whole series in 2010 and they did not like that. And there were a lot of people that were very vocal about that. Um, but like I said, the people that were actually in charge of it thought it was wonderful. Did and they great. change the yeah. rules or change the policies? No, but it, they have, they have changed the rules where they've, um, built classes now, okay. which, which it's all gone yeah, in a, it's all gone in a positive direction and they have a good thing going. Um, but it's just, man, uh, I don't know. I, I love racing there and there's really good competition, but, I, I leave, it's very hard on equipment. That track is very hard on equipment. So it's, it's a lot to go race your car there. Well, cause it's fast dirt roads. It's not rocky stuff. It's no, just fast it's a, dirt roads. No, no, it's very rough. It's, oh, I really? used to be, it's oh, okay. tight, it's, it's rough, tight. rocky, muddy. It used to be kind of fast and it's all been eroded away slowly. Um, it's and the ruts rough. have gotten di bigger. It's very, very rough. Um, almost unbelievably rough. This year when we went and did it, well, hell, I had just got COVID and I didn't know it. So I was in the car and I was like, I feel like crap. Yeah, he, was, he felt like shit. And I was like, he, shut up, dude. Dude, what did you tell me? You were like, if this was the last moment in your life, I don't even know what it was. I pretty much told you not to be a bitch. Shut up and co-drive because you weren't getting out. I just told him that I was going to throw up and then I'm not going anywhere. And then he I just was, gave me this big emotional spiel on like how <laughs> much of a pussy I am. Deal I'm with like, it. Yeah. yeah, I just, I, I'll never, I got to bring up the Mr. Scott incident when we were at Hammers in, in the lead, blew a steering pump. And we had to change a steering pump in the last pit. Yep. And we're sitting in the car. And anytime you're in the pit as a driver or a co-driver in the pit with the vehicle being worked on, time stops. I mean, you just, a minute feels like an hour. Yeah. And it was really hard to sit there and know exactly what needed done and how to do it. And the guys that were helping didn't have the same experience because they were just volunteers and hadn't done it on the car before. So they're kind of learning firsthand. And the motor's 220 degrees, right? Yeah. Everything is hot. insanely hot. So it sucks. But yeah, after like two minutes, I had to get out and start helping. And my buddy Scott, I'll never forget this. We were there changing the pump together. And he's, <laughs> he's holding the pump and he's trying to get the last bolt out. And he said... He goes, I, I can't do it. It's too hot. I'm getting burned. I looked him right. I looked him right in the eye. I said, Scott, 
I said, your burns will heal. I said, we will <laughs> never get this. We will never get this chance again in our lives to win this race. Get out of the way. And I grabbed the pump with my bare hands, dropped it out, put the new one in. And, and we laugh about it now, but Scott said, he's like, I'll never forget that moment because really it's again, like what your brain tells you you can do versus what you can actually do. I didn't feel it. Yeah. Oh, my hands were trashed after, but I didn't care. All I wanted to do was win. I turned it completely off. It's amazing what your body's capable of under those circumstances for sure. And that we'll always remember that story though. Oh yeah. But it is, it sucks working on a hot car. Oh yeah. I now have a Nomex sleeve that I put in my door bag. So if you ever have to get, shove your hand in the engine bay, you, you don't have to roast your forearm yeah. on whatever you're laying it against to work on it. But yeah, it's just your burns will heal. Your burns it's, will heal. It's not, it's not wrong. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking metal metal album. And listen, listen, I'm really soft does. in a lot of other walks of life, but when the helmet comes on, oh yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. I, I tell my that. wife every time she's like, "Stop complaining about something." I'm like, "Listen, Dude. I have to save it up for the one day a year where I have to be tough." Very angry. <laughs> <And> very, yeah, <laughs> I get to be very angry one day a year. No, I'm honestly that one day a year. I'm the happiest person in the world. And I think last year was probably last year was the hardest hammers for me. It was the first one I didn't finish in 14 years. I believe it was, it was something crazy. We had, we lost a, we lost a rocker arm in the motor. And And that was my first year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a real great feeling for me. We were doing awesome. It was, it was a very, man, it's hard to tell the story and not get emotional, but the, the, we had a, we had an accident in the, in the pit when like midweek, right? It was Wednesday. It was qualifying day. Yep. And, uh, 45 minutes for qualifying. Yep. The car was coming back from getting the radios, uh, tuned. And, um, I was, you know, normally you're very busy at hammers. <clears throat> so the, the guys take care of a lot of that stuff. And I wasn't in the car. I wasn't driving it. I told Nate to take it over and, didn't we didn't even consider who was bringing it back and it was a new guy that was helping um i brought it back and i hear the car come into the pit and it was coming in kind of hot and i'm like you know a little bit annoyed that it's coming in that fast and if you've ever seen our pits it's they're really tight yeah they're really safe we have you know three trailers and a big u and it's hard to get in it's pretty tight to get in so i was kind of upset and you know it's people are walking around the pits. I mean, my kids have a little area behind the kitchen where they lay and play with their trucks. Like it's real low key. It's one of the safest places on the lake bed. And the car comes in and stops and I'm like, okay. And I hear it free rev like three times, like rap, 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 like near red line. I'm like, now I'm pissed. I'm sitting in the tent and our tents are all windowed off. You can't see out. So I get up, <clears throat> my wife gets up, we're all going out to see what the hell's going on, who's driving it, because I'm about to give him a, you know, a piece, like, hey, what are you doing? Like, this is chill out. And before I even, uh, my wife gets to the tent canopy door, halfway unzipped, we hear the car at full throttle and immediately know, oh, fuck, this is bad because there's only one direction it's going and there's no way out and there's people there. And I watched my race car drive over my four-year-old, throw him 10 feet up in the air and hit my two-year-old with the side of the tire. And I, I thought my kids were dead. Everybody said I was screaming, no, no, my babies. And I thought, I thought my life was over. I mean, I really did. I, in that flash of an instant, I thought like, my life is over and I don't even, I don't even want to be, I don't even be alive right now. And you know, you're, you have to react in a situation like that. So I I went right to the two year old. He was the closest to me and my wife went to the four year old and immediately I'm just checking, I'm squeezing his arms and his legs and I can, I can feel that he's, he's moving them and he's crying and I'm like, okay, I know he's neurologically okay right? I don't see any wounds. I like, he's okay. And I look over to my wife, he's crying, he's upset, but he's not like dead. I look over to my wife and I'm sure my four-year-old's not even responsive. I see he's crying. I'm like, okay, thank God. The first thing I see is the back of his head has a quarter size hole and there's blood squirting out of it. Four-year-old kid. And I'm thinking, oh my God, like, 
he hit the, must have hit the rebar when he fell that we staked the tents down with. And so I'm screaming, you know, put pressure on it. And, and we're telling everybody, go get help, call 911 because you're in the middle of the desert. Yeah. Thankfully, there's medical on the, that lake bed. And this, stuff like this happens at these kind of events and you just don't even hear about it. Like most people haven't heard this story. And uh, everybody goes and, and and it's chaos. I mean, there were probably 30 people in the pits. I know yeah. Big B's whole crew was out. You just heard women screaming and, and the kids were crying. It was chaos. It, it felt like we were under attack. It felt like any of those shootings you see where everything's calm and then you're like, oh my God, no. this is chaos. And it wasn't over. The car was parked in Casey Gilbert's race trailer on the woods still. And I hear my wife's behind it holding Nixon and I hear the car go from forward gear to neutral and then click into going into reverse. And I'm like, this isn't over. This nightmare's not over. The car's coming back. And thank God, uh, Josh's co-driver, Jared, everybody was racing over to do anything they could to help. And, and Jared jumped through the window of that car and, and killed the car, he turned the kill switch off. And uh, yeah, I mean, thankfully my children are okay. Uh, they're a hundred percent fine. It's an absolute miracle. Um, but I thought for sure we were going to lose them that day. Nixon had a fractured pelvis in two places and a, a broken sacrum and a partial pneumothorax and, and why it was just beat up. But, um, I look at that and I'm like, this is crazy. They could have died. And I was ready to go home hundred percent. I said, screw this. I don't care. Like that race means shit to me. I don't even care to go back to it. Like I was so such an emotional wreck. And it was that evening that Nixon finally kind of like came out of shock. And the first thing he said to me, which breaks my heart and it's hard to say it, he goes, Dada, why did you run me over with the race car? Ooh. He thought I was driving. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, buddy, I'm like, it wasn't me. And it doesn't, no one rang. It wasn't on purpose. It was, an, it was an accident. It should have never happened. And, um, uh, and, you know, after he finally calmed down, we talked about it a little bit. I told him, I said, hey, listen, you're, you're going to be okay. They ran a bunch of tests on him, did the CAT scans and, and, and everything. And we figured out what he had. And I said, look, buddy, you got a long road ahead of you. You're going to be a couple of weeks till you walk. And it's, you know, you're going to be okay. And I'm sorry this happened, but we're going to, I'm going to take you home and get you better. And he looks at me and he goes, okay, but you didn't race King of the Hammers yet. <laughs> I'm like, dude, <laughs> I don't care about that at all. I not just, an, I'm glad, not an issue. I'm glad yeah. you're alive. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't care about that. We're going home. I'm going to drive you home because he flew out. And so he was like pumped to ride home in Mac. We have a big red Volvo. Mm -hmm. It's named Mac, of course. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, he's insistent that we race. And I'm like, nope, this is not even up for debate. But I said, you're going to not like the position you're in tomorrow. You're, you have pain medication. And tomorrow you're going to be really sad about this. You're going to be really hurting but we'll talk in the morning because my kid doesn't let anything go. Thursday morning rolls around. We wake up, it's a long night. Dad, first thing, are we going to race King of the Hammers? Are you serious, dude? No, like we're going to go home. You, you, you're, you can't even walk. You're in bad shape. I'm going to take you home. Dad, I really want you to race King of the Hammers. He's four years old. I'm like, okay, Nixon, if you, if you want me to race King of the Hammers, by God, if you want to go to the start line in a stroller, I will race King of the Hammers and I will do the best that I can to make you proud, but I really don't care right now. And that kid did not let me not race King of the Hammers that day. We started dead last and we passed. I, and I told, I told my wife, I said, I have literally nothing to lose. I said, I've already won because these kids are still here with us. That's all I care about. I'm going to go out and have the best time of, of what we can do with a last place start. And what did we go? 81 cars on lap one. We passed, yeah. we went to 19th place by lap two. By the start of lap three, we were in physical third with corrected time on our side before the the, the kill switch died. Yeah, I think, well, we were in physical, like... Physical fifth, fifth third yeah, uncorrected. And third yep. uncorrected yep. time. Chasing them down, that's right. Yeah, it was, i tell you one thing, that was a hell of a ride. It and was like, a hell of a drive. We were both, like, we had that, like, motivation that... I had, I had nothing to lose. Every other year, I was like, oh, you know, I, you're just in your own head. I knew that I was going to go home to my kids and I didn't care about anything else. And it was, yeah, you had something to drive for. Yeah. I had abs absolutely something to drive for. I was so pumped, but I was worried at the, at, after all this transpired, I'm like, well, shit. I'm like, I'm not going to subject my kids to this. My wife's going to be like completely destroyed. Like we're not going to race anymore. 
and like hats off to her like picking your partner is so important and i just i'm sad for anyone that that didn't marry their best friend but she looked at me and she said like she goes and it's exactly how i felt she goes these kids could get you know, struck by lightning walking outside the house or hitting the parking lot of Walmart. Like this was a freak thing for a woman, uh, for a new mother to have the cognition to realize that and then like stand behind it and know that she's doing good by her children for showing them life experiences and you can't live in fear. Like I love her to death and my kids feel the exact same way. Like they should be scared around a car. Now they'll look twice when something starts and they know for sure. Like they learn, you know, they know, Hey, be mindful of that. But those kids, they love it. And I, I, I won't stop bringing it back out because like I said, bad things happen to good people all the time, but you can't, those kids will always remember King of the Hammers. Yeah. But <laughs> it's funny now in a parking lot when they're not listening or whatever. Do you guys want to get run over again? <laughs> Dude, I've heard you say that. I'm like, is that funny? Yeah. Can we make jokes about that Yeah, now? we can say that. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. But I love them to death. I had yeah. to tell this story because the reality is these cars are like, uh, they're like loaded weapons. Yeah. Yeah. They really yeah. are. I mean, any car in that matter for a garage, like... The, the people that reached out to me and told me, hey, dude, like this stuff happens all the time. You're not alone. Um, it was pretty overwhelming, to be honest. So like the message is, I guess, just always be careful. It's like I will not yeah. back a vehicle off a trailer without putting a, at least a lap belt on. Yeah. Like safety is paramount. And right when you take it for granted, I don't care if you're running equipment. I don't care what you're doing. It's when it's going to bite you. Yeah. Um, so we always we always treat that kind of stuff. Like I'm really the only one that moves that thing anymore and uh, a lot more careful about yeah. how we proceed. But yeah, just that's the message is you can't be safe enough with them. Yeah, there's stuff that happens. I, mean, I, know, I know it was kind of hush hush. There was not, not much talked about it this year, but there was an incident this year. Yep with some cars and a few yeah. teams went home. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's just a dangerous sport, whether you're on the track or off the track. Well, is. I, I always found it funny for us, like going to the Cove and whatnot for events, like we all have the fire department background. So yeah, like, our whole group of yep, like, that, like, like that seven dudes. That risk analysis is just <clears throat> ingrained in us. And we I, I can't function without thinking about that stuff. And we go, we go out rock crawling and like come across somebody else doing a recovery. And we're like, what are you doing? doing? Yeah. And then like we get... We've we've had people like pissed at us. They're like, "Oh, who are you? What do you know? Like, get out of here!" Like, I know what I'm doing, and it's like, no, you've got spent you've hundreds got, of hours you, of technical you, yeah, rescue class. Yeah, you've got like you know quarter inch chain trying to pull a five thousand pound vehicle. Like, all right, like call me when your head's cut off by that chain, and I'll I'll try and stop the bleeding. Like, yeah, no, that you're right, and I think that that's <clears throat> a big thing that um, as this off road industry grows, like awareness needs to be spread, right? Yeah. Like. It's growing. I mean, you can go, you can go buy a Bronco Raptor right now and go start doing this kind of crap, and yeah. and people are able to get into that. I mean, look at the the side by side market. Yep. Right. Like, look, I think the side by sides are worse. Absolutely, totally worse because way more accessible than a Bronco Raptor. Well, way more accessible, <laughs> and I mean, really, let's be honest, faster, way faster, and more yeah. capable in the dirt specifically, right? Like they rip. Yeah. 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 The new machines are un- incredible. So, uh, yeah, I think that's a that message needs to be hounded on more and more because yeah. it only takes, you know, unfortunately a few bad apples and they're out there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've, we've come across a lot. We've got, there's a, I just saw the picture not that long ago of, of me, the, and, me and Tom, our other buddy who's a career firefighter and uh, a paramedic in Fairfax County. And like there was a guy trying to, he got, he rolled his bead on an XJ on a massive ledge uh, at the cove and he's got a high lift, no support, no cribbing, nothing. And he's trying to get the, the Jeep high enough with the suspension travel to get the tire off, put a spare on and get off the trail. And like the Jeep's rocking, he's underneath of it trying to wedge rocks and things. And we're just like, okay, get, go away, go away. And then next thing we know, we've got a Jeep behind it, a Jeep in front of it. It's like winched in all four directions on snatch blocks and then we're building cribbing up to the jeep and it's and it's like people are like all oh, that just to change a tire and i'm like well i don't i don't want to die this weekend yeah <laughs> not at all getting, getting pinned under a jeep was not on my list of things to do so yeah all that to change a tire like it's the way it should be <laughs> for sure yeah then casey what the heck did he do with poor the- casey Kate, the gilberts the fact that they're alive is amazing <laughs> they, i mean they work in they work in they have a tree service business oh, and they, yeah. i love those, those guys are nuts i love they nuts. are nuts they just aren't casey's just 
just built differently. And so <laughs> yeah. is Cameron. And those guys, Casey's taking the high lift to the face. Cameron's had reconstructive surgery to his whole nose from Casey whipping him with a pine and the skid steer. Like, these two, I, the <laughs> fact that they... I love them to death. Yeah. They're my best friends, but they're crazy. Yeah. I, <laughs> they make me feel sane. <laughs> yeah, I hate high lifts. Yeah, yeah. Casey oh got God, it. Yeah, yeah, that was... <laughs> yeah I've, I've gone strictly to bottle jacks now. I don't even carry a high lift in any of my vehicles. We, we still carry a high lift for its, you know, you can unscrew a lot of situations yeah. with a high lift. But, uh, but yeah, they're definitely dangerous yeah, if the, you don't know how to use them. The, the bottle jack and the, the recovery board is, is my go-to now. Right. Yeah, I know that. Because I thought that was hilarious. Like, I know they're a sponsor. Man. But the Max Tracks and all the race cars this year. They're not a sponsor. We buy those. Oh, you buy those? Oh, yeah. And, oh, people, I, and everybody. I, I was like, I'm no, like, what, the, not, what nope. are you using as a Max Tracks Everybody board? makes fun of us. Oh, you're really going to use those recovery boards to get unstuck in yeah, that big, nice. high horsepower race car? No. Have you ever changed a tire in the desert? Good, yeah, you, your luck. jack sinks into the sand. Absolutely. Good luck. We use those things all the time in the rocks. They'll bridge stuff. You put a rock under them. They're a, a wonderful platform to jack off of in the desert. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you guys are doing that in the if, desert. If you're jacking off in the desert, yeah, use your point max where, track. Point where you throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have 13. Yeah. yeah, no, I carry them on my... Uh, in my, my Overlander, my yeah. Adventure Wheelers, I've got a, a set just for the bottle jack. They work so. That way, if I gotta change a tire in the mud, if I gotta yep. do anything, I can have a something steady to jack off of. Yes. I was <laughs> free running with uh, Blyler, and uh, we had got a flat, um, and <laughs> was using the, the freaking high lift. And I, like I said, I, I have a hate relationship. Not a yeah. love hate, I just have a hate relationship <laughs> with Hate, them. hate. And, uh, I got pissed off at it, so I, in my infinite wisdom, decided to throw this high lift jack off of the mountain. Um, Still lives there today? No, no. He he was like a, a like a, <laughs> he he tried to be like a little bit of a father figure to me, so he made me go down and pick it back up and, <laughs> and put it back on Good his car. Good for him. We need more people. Yeah, like Josh. yeah. No, he 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 did. He he put it right to me, but yeah, fucking high lift jacks. I threw that thing right off that mountain. <laughs> I did, and then he was like, "Well, you know what you got to do now." Mm -hmm. Did that thing. feel good? Was it worth it? Oh yes, yeah, I was thing. just teaching the five year old. It's, it's that. always worth it. Mm -hmm. yep. And when I when I had worked up uh, in Pennsylvania uh, for Big B Manufacturing, um, I had just got my turbo razor, <laughs> and I was so stoked about it. And uh, so I went out in Josh's parking lot, and I ripped the biggest donuts out in the gravel parking lot. And it was like cyclones, and it was so awesome. And he was sitting there, and he was just smiling, 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 smiling. And I was like, he's so proud of me. No, he wasn't. He was just waiting for me to come up so then he could tell me that I had to sweep all the gravel off of his asphalt uh, yeah. Um, parking lot. Yeah, not, and not fix the gravel. Yep, yep, yep. Not blow, not get a nope. big broom on a skid nope. steer. Nope, push. Nope, it, broom. Th it took me like three or four hours I to push that. the parking lot. And I used uh, that's to, how I learned. I used to blow. I learned to drive off-road in Maysville, West Virginia. I told, I told this story at uh, the Motorsports Today. My, my grandfather had 400 acres there, still does. I learned to drive on, on that farm, and I, every time I'd come in, man, I'd come in hot through the gravel driveway and blow gravel out in the field, and my pap would lose it, and he'd make me, he'd make me pick all that gravel back up, and I would used to get so upset with him. Pap, really, does it, there are rocks. There's rocks all over this mountain. This is, and now, uh, you know, I'm a dad. I have long gravel roads and driveways, oh, yeah. and guess what? I'm that guy. I get it. <laughs> yeah, full my, circle. Full circle. Yeah, growing up, we had uh, three acres and, like, a subdivision, but there was one acre that my dad, like, said, look, this one acre, you can do whatever you want with. So we had dirt bikes and go-karts and four-wheelers and stuff, but That's I always awesome. went outside of that one acre. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. And now I have my own property with my five acres and my dad comes over here and he <laughs> loves it because yeah. every time he'll just drive and park the in yard. my yard yep he just and and Good he just him. laughs and then he just like when he gets done finishing a beer he just throws it in my yard <laughs> and and like he's like and, you did it to me i do it to you and i deserve it i know i do like and that's how i've learned everything is just through the school of hard knocks i, I am the fuck around and find out King. Yeah, I think that's why we've done so well together and become such good friends. <laughs> the, the only way to learn is the hard way. My kids are doing the same thing. I'm like, yep. I've, I've told you boys, but they want to learn the hard way. So yeah, yep. Everything. I'm, I have an eight month old and I'm trying to prepare my wife for that. Cause I, I was the same way. If you told oh, yeah. me, no, don't do it. The first thing I would do is, 
do exactly what you said not to do. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's why I, I kept yeah. chasing this hammers thing. Yeah. Oh, nobody from the East is ever going to win King of the Hammers. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. My wife is not motivated by that. Like, I'm the one <laughs> yeah. that likes to be told I can't. She does not like that. Yeah. How, many, how many East Coast guys have won Hammers? Me and Josh. And Josh, Josh is like, man, he makes me so happy, too, because he came to me, and I don't know. He started coming out. He was a Lime Mountain guy. Mm -hmm. We met at Lime Mountain. And he started coming out. He wanted to help. He, he came out and spectated one year. Then he wanted to help. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, more people, the better. Like, this guy's legit. I, I know we're like-minded. And uh, he had a lot of, lot of potential, a lot of resources, and he wanted to build an Ultra 4 car. And we hadn't done a, we hadn't done a production version yet. Um, we had done some, like a laser cut chassis, but it was, it was in its infancy. Mm -hmm. And so when Josh came out, you know, he was bugging me after that race to, to build a car for him. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, man, it's just, it's going to, I don't want to do it by hand. It'll take too long. We, you know, it's, it's just going to be a pain. And he bugged me and bugged me and bugged me. And finally, <laughs> finally he wasn't getting anywhere with me and he was getting frustrated. And finally he goes, well, he goes, I guess I'm just going to have to go build a bomber or something. And I'm like, oh, man, this <laughs> Pennsylvania guy is going to go buy a West Coast car. Like, I can't let him do that. That's crazy. We got to do something. And so I said, all right. I said, let's do something together. I said, you've got, you know, in-house engineering and CAD resources that I don't. And we have, you know, experience and knowledge and we'll help you build the first car. Help us design the laser cut chassis and do fixtures. And mm -hmm. we'll do a chassis and cool. And so, you know, we kind of shook hands and sat down the road. And uh, John, John Balducci, Dom's brother, who was working for me at the time, and I spent some time up at Josh's shop, and we essentially took the first production or prototype pro chassis and designed it in SolidWorks. So we kind of reverse engineered everything. Um, the car from what the first one was is probably 90% the same. We just made things easier to work on, more serviceable, mm -hmm. that stuff. But we got the chassis done and we built fixtures for it and we built the chassis and we're like, cool, that's awesome. Maybe we should put pivots and drivetrain mounts in it. Like, why not? We did suspension mounts and drivetrain mounts and we're like, Badass. All in CAD? All in CAD. We're like, badass. This is working out. This is great. Um, why don't we just make the body panels and tins? Because it sucks to do them by hand every time for the same car. And like I said, Josh and I are very like-minded, and he can't do anything half-assed. So it's all 110%. And before you knew it, 90% of the car was in CAD, and we built that first one. And it was just phenomenal. It was just so so over the top and beautiful we dedicated i really took 2015 off right from racing and we did all the redevelopment of that car in cad um so yeah it's how really, many how many cars do you have out there right oh, now it's pretty 15 or 16 now um so it's really it's coming up on 10 years now Dude, but um i was just gonna say you want to talk about how racing can impact people's lives like i met you all you know obviously we did things together and then met josh to build your race cars yep Josh ended up hiring me at some point, and uh, I went up and worked for him for two years, and I tell you, that was two years of boot camp. Those guys <laughs> up there work harder than anybody I've ever met in my life. Like, they just never stop. Are they just doing manufacturing? Yep. It's just, just gen a general manufacturing? Massive machine shop, yep. um, like, with machines that I could put my Jeep on and mill. Like, oh, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a big operation. It, it's absolutely insane. And, like, he taught me so much about, like, if you're going to do something, you better do it right. Do it right. And Again. every time yep. that I would try to cut a corner, yep. he would just kind of look at me and then it would fail and be like, I told every you. Every time I cut a corner, it bites me. Every single yep. time. And that's yeah. why I really appreciated and respected Josh's approach to everything. And like the whole point of this story was he knew that he could design a car, build it, test it, race it. And one of these days when King of the Hammers, but he knew that path of development was at least as long as what we'd already done. Cause he didn't even know how to rock crawl. Mm -hmm. And when he came to me, he said like, I want to win King of the Hammers. And I said, if you get in one of these cars, you'll win King of the Hammers in the next five years. Well, guess who won in nope. 2020, Josh Blyler. Nope. And he saved himself a lot of time and energy from trying to reinvent the wheel, getting into a pro chassis. Cause it was proven. And he was, a, he, like I said, hell of a driver, um, wicked talented, good resources and just hella driven. Yeah, and yeah. that's, that's why I love Josh. That's why we're such good friends and, and partners and it works out really well. Dude, those guys are just, they're a completely different breed. Like 
I went up there with the intention of like, you know, going and trying to better my career and better my knowledge in machining because that's what I've loved. I like, I do fabrication and stuff on, on the side. Like that's like, that's like my hobby thing, but like machining, running CNC machines, that that's like what I love. And like when I went up there, I was like, holy crap, these guys do not screw around. It, it's insane. Um, and like that whole Jeep is all designed in CAD. Nice. I got a 3D model of every single part and component cool. on that whole thing. And it was just because uh, he has a way of motivating me <laughs> was like with the whole, oh, you can't do it. Once you go down the road of CAD, I mean, that ends up in your shop. Yeah. That was one of the first things I did for yeah. my so business. I, you're, I was, you're in trouble. I, I, scr- oh, yeah. I screwed myself. We're actually moving our shop this coming week into our new building. And my new building came with, it's a two by two. Yep. Crossfire. Yep. I got a bridge port and I have a manual lathe. Oh awesome. yeah. And I've been trying to teach myself CAD. It takes me like two hours to draw a flat bracket, but yeah. you just got to start. I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't know. Yeah, it's that's all. I just don't. It, it's the time to sit in front of the computer and practice it. And I know I just have to do it, but it's. What like, do you have? For what? Uh, the software program. Oh, uh, it's a cheap one. It's called Shaper 3D. Okay. Yeah, it's just Never basic. Heard of it, but yeah. yeah, it's just basic. Real simple. Well, I've outside done, the podcast, I could probably show you some things. Yeah. Yeah. Really. He's, Nate's good with it for sure. But like, you'll get to the point where I'm building like a three point hitch deal for my tractor right now, all on the plasma table. It's so yeah. funny. No way too. would I do it without it. It's, it's, fun, like, it's fun watching uh, the grind hard guys because I'm, I'm a big YouTube, yeah. YouTube yeah. watcher and watching uh, Ethan. Yeah. 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 Watching Ethan at grind hard just fucking whip shit up. I'm like, oh, holy but, shit. I mean, it's not just whipping shit no, up. No, it looks it, like it's yeah, whipping yeah, shit yeah, up. They make it, it look it easy. come across that way. It's funny, though. Like, when I worked at uh, Fabrotech, I worked, that was my first job out of high school, and it was just a big industrial machine shop with all manual lathes, like all manual mills and lathes. So, like, and like, I was taught, like, CNCs are shit. Yeah. You, you, like, you can't do on a CNC what you can do with this manual machinery. And like for seven years, I ran that stuff. And then uh, Josh at Big B, he was like, dude, learn CNC. Yeah. I'm like, no, that's <laughs> stupid. And then I went up there and I was immediately like, oh man, holy <laughs> crap. But it was the best foundation that I've ever laid for my personal career with that. Cause like you, you have to do it the hard way. Yeah. Everything yeah. that yeah. you have to do is 100%. the hard way. Yeah. Got to learn how it works before you can exactly. it. Exactly. It makes you appreciate it. And now I, you know, run a multi-million dollar machine shop and it's, if I didn't have that ba- that that like base, and then had Josh like beat the crap out of me for two years and tell me that you know I suck and <laughs> really to make me better, like I couldn't do what I'm doing now. And like now everything I do is in CAD. I used to cut everything out with a damn cutoff wheel. Yeah, like that's I built I think six chassis with a grinder and a manual ratchet. I did too. When I started pulling out cardboard yeah. and a hand plasma yeah, torch, yeah. I was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. And I just yeah. thought that that was how it was. And like, I was very stubborn. I'm a very stubborn person, but now I'm like, okay, it's going to take me five minutes to draw this bracket up and then 32 seconds to cut it out. Yeah. I'm not going to do that with cardboard. Yeah. I can't like, it takes a lot. Like I have, I have probably like three months of CAD designing, uh, in, in the Jeep. But like when I cut something out, it just fits. But look how much you've taught yourself yeah. doing that. Oh my god! Three months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like after work, like after hours on the weekends, I was always in in the shop, just like designing stuff. Buried in your computer, just oh, measuring yeah. and yeah. And it was something that I never thought I would get into because I was like, no, I'm gonna do everything. And well, and that's like the best I saw the future too. Of okay, let's build a race car that we can replicate. And now I look at like what could my children do for a career that's not going to become you know, replaced by AI or robotics and be something that's sustainable. You're always going to need designers like yeah. the five-year-old. He's a hell of an artist. And yeah, the, the blue collar jobs will not go away. No, no. But if you wanted to start a, uh, you know, being a truck driver or uh, yeah. start an excavation business right now, I tell you, you're an idiot. Yeah. Because guess what? That dozer, you can program to hold that grade right there and yeah, you can do it all fair. day. Oh, they're already doing that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And guess what? Truck drivers, they're going to become obsolete. Like they're going to be all... They will. Well, so actually, my, my wife works for a robotics company that does that self-driving software, mm-hmm. and it's it's still a long ways off. I know, but long haul stuff like the fact that we don't utilize rail more in this country is kind of yeah. kind of on mind boggling with how much freight and cargo moves. Yeah, you know, across the con- across the country. Yeah, they need to change something. Mm-hmm. I agree yeah. with that, but well, if you I just, don't know if the self-driving trucks is the answer yet. No, I don't like it at all, but yeah. I don't think that getting into long haul truck driving as a 20 year old person yeah. is a, no, wise, a wise career choice unless you want to change. Nope. But it's like drive to Calif- 
California right now, our infrastructure is crumbling. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's absolutely crazy how bad the roads have gotten. Yeah. And it's just like a dumpster fire. So like I've started coaching, like I look at, okay, how did I get to the point of where I'm at today and not become a complete screw up? I had a great father. I lost my mom young and my dad was there. He was like the number one person in my life. I had good family support and good friends, but most importantly, I had amazing mentors and coaches, coaches and, and, and friends. And so I've already started coaching, you know, like U4 soccer and little league now. And I think the only way to really influence the future of this world is through young kids, Mm -hmm. right? The generation and people have that figured out and not for the best all the time. So I'm doing what I can locally with, you know, the, the people that I can to not raise another generation of people that are entitled to everything and, and buried yep. in their phones. Yeah. Just need to freaking push more skilled trades. A hundred percent skilled well, trades. So, so where I grew up, I grew up in Loudoun County. I grew up in the richest county in the country. Yeah. Yep. Second, in, second richest. Second, sorry, second <laughs> richest county in the country. What's the first? I didn't know the uh, trades Montgomery. existed in high school. I believe that. Yeah, my, it was looked my, down upon. My high school did not push yeah. the trades at all. I, I was a, I was a mechanic in high school yeah. working at the, the, the NTB National Tire and Battery and How? everyone was looking down. I was the only kid working a job in my high school. There was brand new Camaro. It was 2012. Brand new Camaro was just released. Brand new Camaros. I was working a, as a mechanic in high school and nobody even pushed me as the only guy being a mechanic in high school yeah. towards the Right. Trades. Well, how many it times was, did you hear growing up like, hey, you better not do that or you're going to end up being a garbage man, yeah. right? Or you're going to end up, you know, doing this or that. I had, to, I had to push my parents to let me do Votech. Yeah. I was coming out of middle school and wanted to go to automotive Votech. And they're like, oh, you sure you want to like you know, change oil for the rest of your life. And I was like, I just want to work on cars. Like yeah. guys, I had to tell, I come from a, a family with a medical background. I have three older brothers. They're all doctors. My yeah. dad was a physician. I had to call my dad as a freshman and tell him that medicine wasn't for me and I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And it was the hardest thing I ever to do. And the best thing I'd ever did. And guess what my dad said? He goes, okay. He goes, then what, 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 yeah. He goes, what do you want? What's going to make you happy? What are you going to do that you're passionate about? That's and fantastic. like, it was amazing. And I like, he taught me so much as you know to be a father today like how to support your children and hey i'll I'll support my kids in whatever they want to do as long as it's constructive because if you're not passionate about it you're not going to be any good at it you know you're just going to go through the motions and be a normal human being and guess what Normal sucks. Normal. Who wants to be lot. normal? Yeah. Like, like that was yeah. always the thing. Oh, you, you know, you don't, you don't want to be, you want to be normal. And <laughs> I think <laughs> no, you want like, to be yeah. as eccentric as possible. I keep telling yeah. my kids that. I said, dude, normal, normal is yeah. lame, dude. Yeah. You don't want to be normal. You don't want to be like everyone else. Because guess what? No one else has it figured out. The world's a crazy place no, right now. Yeah. Nobody knows what's going on. I'm, I'm turning thirty, and I've got no idea what the hell I'm doing with my life. And it's nor- That's a normal thing. It it's become start. normal. Yeah. Yeah. People don't have a path because, like, we've been taught so much crap like when you really start to unpack all of it you're like wow everything i know is not what it seems yeah. it's a scary thing well yeah. and i like at, at at work um like i don't have a college degree no, and uh I, I i refuse now i've been pushed a lot to to get one because in my position i'm getting to the point where i can't move up any further because i don't have a degree i hate that that's a thing yeah, and i yeah. love i love <laughs> that these companies are now realizing it's bullshit and yep. they're repealing their requirements my first yeah. job was out of college was in corporate america for pack racing and when i submitted my resume the one thing that the uh employer asked was for my for your degree or they wouldn't even look at my application and guess what nothing that i learned in marketing and management mattered for that job of technical development and things like that and it was the most frustrating thing in the world yeah i lost so i have the job now but i lost a job opportunity to and and i work in the trades i lost a job opportunity to a guy that had a um, a degree in psychology. Yep, I and believe he, it. He was working in the trades. I lost a job opportunity to him. And I'm like, how the hell? Yeah, Nate's a good. Nate's a good story. The finish. Like most cause... most all the guys that I work with uh, that have degrees, they have degrees that are not even associated with the stuff that they do. It's ridiculous. Um, yeah. And I actually like. Um, I'm one, like, there, I think that the company I work for employs like 1500 people and, uh, six people out of the whole organization have been promoted to a manager without a degree. Luckily I'm one of the six and I fought really, really hard. Yeah, and they gave you a lot there. of pushback for a long time. And they did. Yeah. But finally I like made my case and, and luckily, you know, I work for a good enough company that they were like, okay, yeah, we'll do this. We realize that you're not, but like, I actually like a lot of our mechanical engineers that get hired, like, you know, we do a lot of work for them, obviously being machining and fabricating. Um, and I teach them 
like the right ways to do stuff, how to design right. something. Yeah. And like, I'm super fortunate that the company is like, okay, this kid kind of knows what he's doing. Let's let him do the stuff. Like, I know that there's financial benefits. Like if I did have my degree, but whatever, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. But like, it, it's still kind of insane to me. Cause I'm like, I always argue. I'm like, why, why do I need this? I'm teaching kids that have this degree, how to do the stuff the right way. So what, what's the point? Right. And but guess, it's that piece of paper. And guess what? It's 2024. If you're motivated to learn yeah. everything in the world is at your fingertips yep. information wise. And like Scott, I don't know how Scott has got brought up so many times in this podcast, <laughs> but, uh, we haven't actually, talked about him for 10 years. No, we now. don't. Yeah. But he, he actually texted me, uh, uh, like a month or two ago. Know, we've um, been talking to and uh he was like uh like the number one skilled trade that's like needed right now is like machinists for yeah. i don't know what industry it is but like and like when i was growing up i was like i know that this is a dying trade that i need to get into and like when i started i started at like you know minimum wage it was like 7.75 or something like that when i started and that's like i was like hell yeah whatever and i moved my way up into where i'm at now and it's just because now companies are like, dude, we can't find people. Yeah. And like everybody that is working for me now, they're all like friends, like best friends or friends of friends. And like, they didn't have any experience in machining and we just bring them in for attitude and then like train them for success. Yeah. Well, but that's like, the best way I'd hire someone is yeah. if I can hire someone that doesn't know anything, that gives me the perfect opportunity to train them to the employee that I need them to absolutely. be. Absolutely. And like, we just look for good attitudes and mechanical aptitude and like, they figure it out. Like my buddy, uh, Jacob, he came from, he was a bicycle mechanic and he is one of the, if not the best up and coming machinist in the shop. Like, dude, the guy just gets it. And like, he's into it too. Like, he's like, holy shit. Like we can just take, like, he's like looking at it. Like I can make a bicycle sprocket out of this. Holy shit. Like yeah. what the heck? And I love it because they're just like super revved up about it. And I, I've been doing it for 14 years now and I'm still excited about it. Yeah. Like that's why I'm building this Jeep. And like, it's funny cause like my misalignment spacers in the Jeep, I could have bought them for $8. Yeah. No, I made them every single freaking part Four on that Jeep. Later. Yeah. <laughs> every single part on the Jeep yeah. I programmed and, and manufactured yeah. myself like the freaking that's crazy awesome. cantilever arm thingy. My buddy Cameron showed me how to do like the uh, FEA, which is just like the strength analysis on all that stuff. So like he, we were able to simulate it in CAD and tell if it was going to fuck up or not. And that was cool. Like See, that's a level of CAD. I, I, I didn't know that was a yeah, thing either. I, and then he was like, wait, let's do this. And I'm like, what are we doing? And he showed <laughs> me and he's like, oh, that's going to fail. And I'm like, yeah, that's, we've done FEAs on all the protests. It's stuff. insane. And like, as long as you kind of like do your shit, right. It'll tell you like, look, that's going to bend. And I'm pretty sure that the arms that I built, if I did something stupid, they may still bend. They will bend. Well, if Cameron helped you, they're going to fail. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> and also, uh, I always say that that Jeep is going to be a street rod. Yeah. Not with 37s on it. But it's going somewhere crazy. On, on smooth steel wheels. <laughs> it's Dude. going somewhere crazy. It looks so like, good, though. I'm not going to do anything like off-road with it, but I will road race it. Well, I will yeah, rally most, race it. Most street rods don't have a 150-plus pound wheel and tire package per corner. And well, that's that why I got cases. turbos. Actually, what do those steel wheels Way. I don't want to talk about I it. I want to put them on a scale. They're heavier than the your the the race setup. The race setup, those believe, are heavier. I believe that. Yeah, I think that they're like 150 pounds a piece. I believe that. Yeah, the race setup's close. It, it's, the, it's 142 on the well, race setup. Most street cars also don't have a solid front axle. Is there a, I know. Is there a 37 is that's heavier than a Nitto 37? Those uh, are the, and those are 38s. 38s, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I think so, yeah. the wider ones. Yeah, yeah those are the, the fat ones. Piece. Anyway, Wait, just from a guy that has to mount and balance tires all day, like Nittos might be some of the heaviest tires. They are, but they are some of the tires They're that also require tough as shit, the yeah. least weight, which is amazing. I don't put weights on my Nittos. Oh, yeah, to balance I line them. the little yeah, yellow dot up with the yeah. valve stem and go. Because if yeah. you put weights on them, especially for something you're going to wheel, yeah. you're going to blow weights off. And then you're, uh, the Nittos, they don't take them. They just don't take them. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been impressed with. Yeah, we, we're strictly mickey falcon ditto anything else i'd yeah. like go get it mounted somewhere else yep because it's just not worth like i can't balance it 
And yeah, you'll run out. You're just gonna complain. You'll go broke putting <laughs> lead on. <laughs> Quality yeah. tires are real. Like I have yeah. some. Oh, like, yeah. oh yeah. I have some like Chinese tires on my car, and like out of nowhere, I was driving down the road, and my whole freaking car started vibrating like yeah, crazy, yeah. and the freaking radials were like coming out of the tread, yeah. and I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. And uh, so what did I do? I went and put another Chinese tire on it. The only <laughs> yeah. thing that touches it's the it's shit box. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that touches the dirt of the road, the tires, yep. and people yep. don't care about them. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I am excited to do four-wheel drifts. And Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to blow the front diff out immediately. Yep. I know I it's will. It's fine. 100%. What's that out of? It, it's out of a 2500 yeah, uh, Chevy. Yeah. Like One of the guys online, I don't remember, uh, Jesse's performance or something like that, he's got a, a rat rod looking thing with the same front diff. Yeah. Um, and he's got it figured out so i need to get with him and see like what he what did. he broke and what he did yeah because he's doing some like he's got well, a, you gotta think the sled pull guys have to have something figured out yeah right yeah, yeah that's, that's true a lot of there's a lot of sled pulling around here too yeah. just, there's got to be something they're probably um, they're probably real competitive though I'd be, i bet they keep a closed book probably but yeah but i'm not gonna yeah, but was, he's, not, he's not building a <laughs> yeah, sled fair. So. Dude, but, that but would they be still probably keep though. a closed book yeah right that would be funny to put that put a sled <laughs> behind that thing <laughs> a 47 <laughs> willies with a 700 horsepower twin turbo <laughs> ls just trying to pull a freaking sled oh my gosh yeah. that's a slippery slope that i'm glad i didn't go down i hooked my <laughs> couple of my diesel trucks back in the day to sleds and oh, man yeah. it's addictive I, a, I got right away from it though. My my new shop is a old diesel performance shop, yep. and I am still cleaning soot oh, and yeah. sludge at it. Well, I've got I've got corner. soot on my ceiling from my twelve valve. Yeah, in nice. my shop. I, yeah, probably I have a hole down. in my ceiling where I fucking hit a golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> I had a net in here because I was learning uh, how to golf, and yeah. I somehow striped the top of the driver, and it went out of the net. It didn't even hit the net. It just went right through my roof. And this was two weeks after I moved into this house. I built this house from, like, I Nothing. built it brand it was, new. Yeah, yeah. stick built scratch. Yeah, and uh, then that was the first thing I did. And you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to leave it there just it's as a reminder. Nate's don't all play grown golf. up. He's a big boy. Yeah, don't play golf, golf in your house. Don't be an idiot. Yeah. And also, yeah. you see, I grew up playing hockey and soccer in my house, and guess what we're doing now in my house? Yeah, the same yeah. stuff. Yeah, I, I, I and you're now hockey. worried about the drywall, right? Yep. <laughs> I do not care. I'm just yeah. like, what? I, I really don't. I mean, I'm like, hey, kids, yeah. please, you're gonna have to fix this one day. Don't do that. But <laughs> breaking, breaking, breaking cider with uh, oh, roller yeah. pucks. Yeah, and oh, we man. have a lot of acreage outside. Go outside. Yeah, yeah. go outside. <laughs> I, I broke a lot of garage door windows with hockey pucks. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, guys, we, dude, we had a, we had a staircase in the center of the house that was like, it was a nice, nice stone, beautiful, and there were fish tanks that were up on top of it. Oh. And if one of those poor fish tanks didn't get the tumble, oh my God, a uh, eighty-gallon fish tank, fifteen feet to the bottom, exploded one That's night. That's a lot of glass. Like a Friday night, dude, sleepover. Was it full? Oh yeah, full. Oh. So we're trying to save these fish. We're like middle school boys my dad is you know pissed pissed that we're dealing with this uh, it was a disaster but i'll never forget that it happened no. it was real it was whew, poor fish all right <laughs> all right guys i mean i'm sure we're gonna hang out and drink beer and yeah. bullshit for another while but let's wrap up the podcast and hear the real stories yeah um i appreciate you guys being on we were trying for this for a long ass yeah. time yeah. before yeah. hammers we were trying to get together yeah. absolutely um, and i'm glad we did and thank you guys yeah. for being patient and not telling oh, me to course. buzz off you're good dude let's do it again sometime we got nothing absolutely. else to do <laughs> um yeah i appreciate you working with the schedule and yeah nate thanks for ha hosting yeah. us and having us on absolutely this uh, is all right thanks for being on yeah um, i think this, i've this has been one of the most enjoyable podcasts i've done because i've done the same one about a half a dozen times because it's always different people and they're like Ooh, tell us about yourself and this and yeah, that yeah. doing it with nate and you guys Dude, let's just hang, different stuff. Let's just hang out, drink it. beer, and tell good stories. Yeah, I love it. Nope. We should get together after we do the twenty-four hour deal again. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to. I want to hear. I want to hear an outside perspective from because like, like, I can't do it. It's the weekend of my son's first birthday, so okay. there's no way yeah, my no. wife's giving me. No, permission I don't do that. To <laughs> disappear for four days again. Nope, don't do that. Um, I'll be drinking beer in Germany. But oh, yeah. yeah, it's. I, I want to get an outside perspective, different course. I have no idea what to expect. Except yeah, we, we're we gonna either. We're gonna have a blast no matter what. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's fun. We have like. I, I get that it's just like a, it, like it's not a race. It's a rally. It, it's a race. Well, Everyone else is going to treat it as a race. It's a race. I'm not, but I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'm not because I don't care because I race. Yeah. So you've, you've won important races. No, I just, I just want to go out, have fun and drive on the back roads and spend a day with my dude here that we don't get to hang out enough, but sure. and I'll say this. And promote motorsport and on, on the East Coast. hundred oh, percent. That's All the biggest the, thing. And tourism. No, a hundred percent. That's, that's the real reason we're doing it. The, the, really the impact to the communities of West Virginia. I've been doing yeah. this since I could drive though. Like this is exactly what got me into everything that I'm doing now. But 
we got some tricks up our sleeves and oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> Hell we'll yeah. just it'll be fun we'll have we'll see how it turns out without saying too much where <laughs> where where can uh where can people find you guys on online or offline or oh man i we get the whole social media thing well we do it because we have to and <laughs> we love this, our, we love our partners boat. but i hate that stuff my wife's really she's much better than i am at it but uh on instagram it's 21 eric miller and miller motorsports llc facebook search miller motorsports eric miller and then Nate, he's got some handles. He's covering this build of the rat rod, which is pretty cool. Yeah, the old 21 Zuki Nate. If you want to look at a kind of cool willies, it's got some turbos and four-wheel drives and 37s and also slammed on the ground. Check it out. Side pipes. Mm. Side pipes, yep. Side it's pipes going to be rowdy. Big waist gates. Yeah. yeah, it does have big waist gates. <laughs> Yeah, that's the only thing cool that's on my site. <laughs> but uh, it, it's, it's kind of cool, so check it out. Yeah. Cool guys. Well, you guys know where to find us everywhere social at the Dirt Drive, Dirt Nerds Off Road, and Dirt Nerds Motors. Yep. Check us out at dirtnerdsoffroad.com. Uh, thank you for the support. If you guys like and review or review the podcast wherever you listen, I will send you a sticker pack. Send me send me a screenshot of your rev- review and your address, and you'll get a sticker pack. So do that. Uh, thank you to these guys for being on. We will definitely do it again. Uh, I appreciate you guys, and we are out. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.